Good morning, I'm John Cole Morgan and welcome to Sewing Street. I am so excited about today. I'm just gonna do that and then I'm gonna do this. Hello. <laughs> you can tell when I've spent a lot of time on a demo, I'm very excited. Our scissors! One of our early birds today, we've got these phenomenal Fiskars scissors. We've had them on so many times. They are just incredible. I have, don't tell Andrew, I must have bought about eight of them because I've got one for wadding, I've got one for paper, I've got one for cardboard, one for foundation paper piecing, one for my really nice Liberty fabric, one for my other, Shh, don't tell Andrew. So these are our early bird today. They are just the most fantastic scissors and I have got so many of them, it's ridiculous. We've had them on several times before, but they keep selling so, so well. And today you're saving four pounds on these, 24 centimeter all the way along, absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal Fiskars quality. Fiskars have been going for about 345 years. They keep buying up these companies that can expand their technology to make their products more efficient. And any company that's been around for that long, you know they're constantly trying to get new initiatives out to be able to make sure their products are the best that they can be. And Fiskars scissors, as anybody who sews knows, absolutely great, great quality. $10.99 for these today. And don't forget, you've got your one day PMP of three so if you buy the early birds, you've paid your postage and packaging and you can check out as many times as you like and you don't pay a penny more. And there are some amazing things on the show today. I'm so excited. We've got Alice and Marion in today and I'm really looking forward to show you that. But we've got a load to show you first. If you haven't shopped with us for, before, best way of doing so is www.sewingstreet.com and it'll come up with our YouTube page in the middle and then beneath that will have all the products of the Today Show all the way along and you can go through and you can have a little bit of a sneak peek about what's coming up in the next couple of hours. If you prefer to call our UK-based call centre, 0800 001 4433, they are phenomenal. Great team there, really, really helpful, and they can answer any of your questions that you need there as well great way. But please don't forget to stay in touch with us on our social media. We've got a studio email address as well. So Alison's here. So if you see during the demo, you've got any questions, drop us a line. So we've got studio at sewingstreet.com. And that may be the first time I've said that email address correctly. It'll probably be the last, but that is, just, that is the best way of getting in touch with us. Otherwise, we've got our Facebook page, which is Sewing Street TV. There's a message function on there as well. So you can drop us a line on the Sewing Street TV page as well. But today we have got the most fantastic four hours ahead of us today. You've got doggy treat bags with Alison now. Then we've got the Lone Star quilt after that. And Alison's having a little bit of a tea break while we do that. And then she's coming back to do her gorgeous aprons and I have been coveting these aprons as I keep looking at them and then 11 o'clock is a phenomenal hour all of our previous quilt kits that we've still got stock of we're going to be revisiting them perhaps you haven't seen them before so we're coming back at that 11 o'clock then after that at 12 o'clock you've got the cross stitch repeat from yesterday with Jane Greenoff so you've got five hours of me today I'm so so pleased you can join us so Without further ado, shall we bring Alison on? Now, the way this is going to happen is you're going to have a slide for a minute or two, uh, just while we safely make sure we get Alison on set. Oh, yeah, th sorry, I've been so silly. I'm going to show you what she's making. These are adorable. Now, unfortunately, I can't have a puppy because we don't have a garden. But if I did, I would be making these all the time. You've got a wonderful little pouch here, little puppy pouch, and you've got them in three different colors. Just look how adorable these are. Oh, I've got that little cord in the wrong place there. Look how adorable they are. So, so cute. And at the back, look, and that is our resident puppy that we all adore, Marge. That's Hayley Bryant's puppy. Absolutely adorable. We love Marge. But the great thing about this bag is it just keeps all your little bits and bobs and your little... Um, disposable bags at the back in this wonderful little section there. Genius. I think this is one of the most genius things we've had on and I'm so pleased we've got the fabulous Alison on to do this. She and I are featherweight uh, fans so she's going to tell us all that in a little bit. So we're going to swap slides over, redo the set and we'll see you in a minute or two. Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also a plique. 
I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember, but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello and welcome back. It's Alison. Hi. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank and you. I know you're very nervous. Yes, Don't be. You're going to be absolutely great. <laughs> Terrified and excited in equal measure. <laughs> exactly. You'll be amazing. So tell me a little bit about you. So some people may not know a bit more about you. Um, I've sewn for as long as I can remember, really. I and you're very good. Oh, very good you. at your shirts, as I <laughs> <Thank> recall. <you. laughs> um, I mean, I've been brought up with fabric because my mum was a dressmaker and my dad was in the Navy and of course he used to bring home these beautiful fabrics from the Far East, <gasps> lovely um, brocades and things from the uh, Singapore when he docked in there. And yeah, it's been around me all my life, but I didn't really start putting kits together until very recently. Well, you're doing very well in my opinion. <laughs> Tell me about these lovely little dog bags. What inspired them? We had, uh, a couple of years ago, we had a rescue puppy mm -hmm. from Romania and, well, I say a puppy, he was 12 months old at the time. Mm -hmm. And you don't realise at the time when you're getting a, a dog from abroad that they're not going to speak English. <laughs> 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 don't bark English. But uh, he was quite reactive when, we, when he was out on a lead. Mm. Not nasty, but not every dog, when a dog's coming to you, wants this little furry thing running at them. Good. So he took a little bit of training on the lead. And I found that the bags with the, that you put on your hip if you bent over they emptied and I didn't want to be fussed with lots of zips so I came up They're with this genius. this clasp I bag makers won't be very happy probably because I called it a kiss clasp and a, a kiss clasp is actually one of the metal ones that um, you open with the two pieces at the okay. top but what it is it's a waterproof lining so that you can put your treats inside and then you can clean it out because that's very important. Of course, what doggy, colour is that one? Doggy treats. This is tan. Tan. Perfect. And we've got brown. Let's take this out a minute because it's not sitting down very well. Because that tan one I think is so adorable. And the grey one. So that's the three colours. Yes. So it's a crossbody bag mm -hmm. and I keep treats in it and also you've got the poo bags on the back. Which is perfect. It's so cleverly thought out and something so simple well, it but means so that, user friendly. Yeah, it means that when I've actually got in there on the lead I don't have to be doing zips and things. I can just pop my hand in and get him to come back to a treat. So that's how it came about. Oh, that's brilliant. But so show me what we get in the little kit. What are we getting? You've got all your instructions and enough to make a bag. So should we move those out the way? So These ones here. I put those at the front. They're so cute. I just love the way they look, look and smile at you from across the room. They're brilliant. This one hasn't got the um, the bag, the pocket on the back. Uh -huh. But I'll, but I'll that's show you something thing, else. I suppose you can put them in different. You can. It's all you. Well, universal. if it was if it, it was just like. A, like a kiddie's bag, if oh. they wanted a little bag, they could um, do it without the poo bags on the back. So you've got your outer, 
and you've got this is ripstock, uh, nothing frayed. So this is so, the black colourway you're yeah, doing now, right? This is grey. Grey. Yeah. Um, the ripstock doesn't fray, so you don't have any problems with any edges. And you've got your. Um, this is for your applique. I've got a thing about applique. I just love decorating things. It's so gorgeous, but it really works with <laughs> this project. It really does. And then you've got your hardware as well in, oh. in your bag. You've got your clasp. Let me take this out. You've got your clasp and your eyelet. Oh, they're so cute. And your so literally button. every single thing you need. Yes, yeah. That's so you've got your hardware in the bag. Yes, yeah. And the great thing is these instructions. Oh gosh, they're really good. Put those in there. Oh, it, these are incredibly, incredibly user friendly. Oh, you know what you're doing. <laughs> so the instructions are really great. Back in there. Them. So we've got three different colours. We've got the that one is grey. That's the grey. You've got grey, tan, and brown. But Perfect. you can you can do changes if you like if you want to personalize it for your dog there's nothing to say that you couldn't put felt oh, right. if you wanted to change it if your your dog's got a white flash on its <laughs> nose you could put a little bit of felt on there but that's the joy about the yeah. MP case you can yeah. do it how you like oh and you also get a roll of poo bags do you oh that's brilliant i'll get you <laughs> to pop little those back in the charm. bag perfect i will say that this roll of poo bags that i got mm. um they're a lot bigger than the ones that i had originally <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted biodegradable ones, but obviously that makes them thicker because they, I think they use potato starch or something like that. Um, so to get them in the pocket and to get this working, you do have to take a few off. <laughs> okay. So yeah, you have to make the roll well, smaller. Well, luckily your, your puppy will always be doing that, yes. so you'll be fine. <laughs> so the one I've got here, this is the brown that's the one. Brand. That's the, is that the, that's the one on your that's hand over this there? One. Perfect. So that's this one here. So the kit that you're getting, exactly the same. You've got all the hardware yeah. in there. These are for the eyes. Eyes and nose. The eyes and nose. You've then also got this one. Oh my gosh, this fabric feels fab. It's wonderful faux it's leather. Really and lovely. unfortunately, um, well, it's vegan I've friendly then as well. I've, um, yeah, I've contacted the supplier that I had it from and I can't get any more. Oh no. So it's going to be a big search now because well, it's just so this... nice because it's got the pattern on it. It's beautiful. But I think just wait. I think everybody's having problems with stocks at the moment yeah. under cl current climates. So that's what you're using for the ears and for the, what we call the, the jowls muzzle. and the lip muzzle. muzzle. There we yeah. go. And that one is your, is it your Bonda Web? It is, yes. Wonderful. I'm because it's active. faux leather and it's you're going to use Bonda Web. <laughs> and then that's the inside of your bag as well. So yeah. what a really fabulous kit. Because if you're going to put treats mm. in it, you really need something that's washable. Of course. Or, so yeah. could you wash the whole bag? Do you put the whole... I don't... No, you could sponge you the outer. That's what I thought sponging yeah. would be much yeah. better. Yeah. Brilliant. And the instructions are fantastic. Oh, thank you. Brilliant. And then I'll just show the last colourway. Popping that back in the bag so I don't get it confused. Oops. The good thing about this faux leather as well is that you don't have to use a special needle. You just use a universal needle or a special thread. You don't have to have a special thread either. Oh, right. Because that was one thing I was going to ask you with going with such large fabric. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And you've got a tiny little beautiful heart. There's a, yeah, there's a little charm on there. Oh, I which I that. Which I actually sew onto the... Onto the bag itself. What a nice little addition because you see I think it's really lovely when you get a package exactly like this and it's a proper present. It's like a present, Where you yes. literally are unwrapping it and you've even got the little decorations on the front. Yeah. I'm a bit worried I'm damaging obviously your bag. Try, oh, I, they can be restuck. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried to um, do most of the packaging without plastic. That's been one Which of the brilliant. things. Which is brilliant. What a nice way of doing it. And the fabrics as well, because you're not using leather, it's much more appealing to a lot more people yeah. who are more ethical. Mm. Yeah, that's another debate. Oh my gosh, that's a beautiful colour. That is lovely. And then you've got your normal, um, not normal, your inside bag yeah. there it's really good feel on that as well and as you say it's nice that you can just sponge open a sponge yeah. wipe them it's and got get them two, done. the two different sides it's mm. got like one side is quite tacky so yes, that's this one's that, a bit tacky. That yeah would be the your, inside what that would the that softer would the, one would the, be the inside that would be the outside of your inside yeah yes mm. that's great and then you've got another piece of that for your your muzzle, that's your for, muzzle. Your back, for your pocket your pocket and that's, that's for, for your, your muzzle and your ears and that's your, your nose and your eyes and then you've got the is it bondaweb it's fuse web. Fuse web. Okay. Yeah, it's actually Brilliant. got like a little crosshatch. It's the glue a nice is a crosshatch. Yeah. yeah. 
feels a little bit stronger than the... It, ten it tends not to bubble quite so much. Ah, okay. Yeah. Well, I suppose some, with this fabric they can as well, bubble. you must have tested everything that would mm. be working best for you. Yes, because you're going to use an iron on it in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. So, shall we start the demo? Show me yeah, how you sure. were going to do these. Okay, shall I just put those at the front there? Yes, that would be great. Before I start Which that... Which colour are you demonstrating? I got the grey one, I think, Perfect. here. I've already cut it out oh, that's ready. Fine. You do it the colour you like. Let's have a look. Oh, no, I've got the tan one. Tan one, okay. I'll put that there. But before I start, I'll show you this one because although not everybody has a dog. I know. <laughs> and sometimes when you go out, you don't want to take a handbag. True. So it's, it can be quite handy to just have your phone. <gasps> Oh, that's so clever! And oh my goodness, it's and a look good at the size back for pocket. The back pocket for your bank card. Oh, for that's card. so clever, so Alison. All you're doing there for anybody that likes a, a pattern hack. I know a lot of people do. You, they so do. you just cut out your your bottom and sew round the three sides of the bottom piece, and then just sew a flap on the top so that that, that is card so is in there. Clever. And then it's just a nice size. Mind you, I've got a big phone, but it's a, a well, nice mine's phone enormous size as well. So yeah. you'd need a good bag for that. That's so brilliant. So th that's a different you, different colour. So in, to do that, could you adapt it with the pattern that you've given us? Oh yes, you would just cut out instead of putting the pocket on the back. You would yes. just cut just out the two flat. pieces. Yeah. Brilliant. It takes some of the um, process away, actually. It makes it And a I lot love the easier. fact you pop the charm on the corner. Yes. Of, is yeah. that, oh, that is so good. <laughs> so, you really have thought of everything with all these lovely little touches. What we're going to need to start off with, let's pull all that out of the way a minute. Here's the, the pattern, and they're all actual size, <laughs> so you're going to take your piece of fuser web and you're going to trace around all the pieces. You've got to make sure that you do both of your ears so that they're opposites when you come on to, you don't want to do one and then come down and do another one the same way round. So then... I want to say, ask you how you know. <laughs> oh, don't ask me how I know, John. <laughs> we all learn through trial and indeed, error, don't we? Indeed. Yeah. Um, so once you've done that, then you're going to cut around, leaving a little border. You don't cut on your line. This is a standard applique, really. So what you're going to have... Oh, I didn't turn the iron on, did I? Let's I just do that all do the time. I me. either turn it on or <laughs> can't turn it on. <laughs> it's quite normal for some And I don't know this iron. I know my iron at it's home. It's very so strong. I really hope it's, this yes, works. <laughs> it will. It'll be fine. <laughs> Our viewers um, are so kind. Do we have what would you need? the silicon ironing mat that and I well, um, not know um, because I've never no, used actually, one and I thought it was a nice opportunity to use is, one but, but I think we might be out of stock of it but we might have one I can just and use I love a piece it because of paper. as you say that the pitter patter uh, of Joe's Joe. feet come <laughs> out to try and find exactly what we need but it doesn't no matter because Joe. there's there were <laughs> the some whole country is watching there were some scraps of fabric under here I'm sure I won't use that quilt <laughs> uh, I'd prefer it if you didn't. <laughs> oh, wonderful. That little hand comes in the corner. Brilliant. I've seen that. <laughs> Did you need some scrap fabric? No, no, Perfect. no, I've got that. That's fine. Brilliant. Because you can use just a pressing cloth or just a tea towel. Uh -huh. But I thought this would be a nice opportunity to try that because I don't have one of those. Perfect. So what I've done now is I've cut out around leaving the little border and then that's going to be fused onto the back. So this is the nose. I'll just do that one on there Perfect. and hopefully... So you've got our wonderful portable ironing board there. Lovely, isn't it? I do love that, Jean Taylor. It's very good. Oh, really? There we go. Well, the right. tan is a currently in your lead. Ooh. Oh, gosh, I've not used that either. That's so clever. Oh, I saw them using it a while back. I wasn't sure... Now, just to check, you've turned the steam off on the top. Yes, this nozzle. is a dry iron. Perfect. It's not very hot yet. <laughs> Might need to rotate it to maximum because I was pressing yesterday and it I does don't. get quite thing warm. thing is, though, this is plastic, isn't it? So exactly. I don't want it on maximum. <laughs> <laughs> so you do it to a temperature that you Let's feel comfortable a... with. That's exactly Let's what see. I do as well, so yeah. I must be doing it right. So we've got a dry iron and you need to cover because, like I said, this is basically plastic. So you don't want to put your iron directly onto any of it. If you don't want to use 
ah, there we go, that's quite hot, it's turning down a little. <laughs> 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 because it is a the, very, very good, a very hot iron. Yeah, because one. the next one is going to actually be on the front of the bag. And what's so funny is in my studio I have exactly the same iron, except I've got the one that turns off after 20 minutes. Yes, I have this as well. This one doesn't. Oh, and you, in about so you're used 25, to it turning 30 off. minutes you'll be working and you've got this very warm patch. Yeah. I'm thinking like, oh, the iron. Oh dear. <laughs> so. So now this is actually so fused that's your down. Nose. No, this is an ear. That, oh, those are that, the was, ears. The that was the nose. Yeah, this is an ear. So I'm going to now cut round on the drawn line. And because I've put that little cross there, this should be the right ear. <laughs> Well, that's a good or is tip. It the left so you... ear? <laughs> <laughs> that's actually a really good tip. Putting a cross on for whichever ear it is. Yeah. Maybe mark your pattern as to left or right, whether you're putting the which ear it is. Right, so now I'm going to take the front that I've already cut out. Oh my goodness, it's And I've so already adorable. done most of the most of the applique. Oh. And I'll I'll sew this one so that you can see. I'll just get the And then all the details of how to do this are in the pattern. It's how all far on, apart yeah. you put things. And there's and pictures, yeah. Everything Brilliant. I noticed it's your a quarter pictures inch, are really good. It's a quarter oh, thank you, because it's quarter inch um, seam allowance. So basically what you're doing is all your applique should be within, a quarter, within that, yes. yeah, so that you're not actually so sewing. So a quarter inch, three eighths of an inch. <gasps> you brought your own little disposable bag. You're going to have to show everybody that because that is oh, what, this really one? lovely. I have this. Oh, I love in, that. In my workroom, I have one in the conservatory. I have one in my bedroom. Oh, I love it. <laughs> because I, I've got chairs with wheels mm -hmm. and if you've got wheels and you get loads and loads of pieces yes. of threads. It can, yep. I've been over. <laughs> <laughs> well, yesterday Jane was telling us that her, her chair, after all those years, had disintegrated underneath her. Yeah. So when yeah. you, now you're telling me that you're falling off your chair and yeah. you push yourself across the room. <laughs> I think we need to do a chair safety thing. Oh my goodness, look how cute he so is. So there we are, that's the, the right here. Yeah. <laughs> So now I'm, this is where we mustn't have the iron too hot. If you're not happy doing the bonder web or fuser web, there is, sorry John, can I just pinch that? Fine. You can use the sew line pen, the glue pen, and glue it down, and also 505 spray, you can use that. The 505 spray you would cover completely so that would be good the only thing I would say with the pen make sure if you're going to use that you put it all the way around the outside edge because you want to make sure that the edge, that is, the edge is stuck down. down for sewing it's that's all we're doing it for we're going to sew it down because but you don't I want it the, to move I use the pen a lot for English paper piecing and that one they tell you yeah. to stay as far away from the edge as you can possibly do yeah otherwise you end up with the dry little mm, bits of glue but they dry really <laughs> well both of those so now we'll Try the hmm. silicon. So with the 505, you're going to not do this indoors. You'll make sure you do this outdoors, and it's a nice, safe product. I use these mainly for quilting, but I have seen people doing exactly that, that you're doing it as a tacky adhesive. Yeah, I've, I've used it down. for when I've used my embroidery machine. Yes. I, um, there we go, that's done. You, you also keep the iron moving. Don't leave it in one spot. So, that's probably why I can't iron. <laughs> <laughs> I hear Andrew does your ironing. No, no, we have a lovely lady, bless oh, her. Dear. She's amazing. <laughs> right, I'm okay. missing her terribly yeah. with lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> so that's now, I mean, it doesn't have to be solid. It's just got to be held down enough to sew. So I'm going over, we've got black thread in here now. I'm go. And just going to sew round the outside edge. Now, are you doing a quarter of an inch in or less than a quarter of no, an inch? No, less than a quarter of Alison, an inch. Alison, from where I'm standing, check. sorry to interrupt, I think your thread may be twisted on your needle. Oh, it is. Sorry. That would have been good, wouldn't it? Yes. Thought I'd let you know before you ended up with an yes. incident because I've got this wonderful habit of having to thread and re-thread the machine on it uh, <laughs> because of silly things go. like that. Luckily, I have a Janome at home, which is, has so, got the same, yep. same things. There we go, that looks right. Oh, we've got an open-toed foot in here as well. Did you want an open-toed foot? No, it's fine. It's, I'm only going oh, to go around the outside edge. I think the box um, is next to Will it be an issue? You. Yeah, I'm not sure. The box is underneath you if you want to change the foot. No, it's fine. What I have got on here is a walking foot, because when I did all the samples and when I was putting everything together, I was using my featherweight. 
no. and it's sewed beautifully. This stuff, absolutely beautifully. It's, it's so soft, it's like a fabric. But <laughs> I thought, oh, I'm going on telly. I'd better go and check on my new machine, <laughs> my all singing and all dancing in my workroom. It didn't like it at all, unless I had the walking foot on. The walking foot does make it easier. Does make it easier. But I have also brought in a couple of things here. Shall I take this down a minute? Don't need that again. I've got these here. We've got uh, that way. This is a Teflon foot that um, some machines come with, and also a roller foot. So if you haven't got if you haven't got a walking foot, you can use the roller foot. It's actually got this here that, that rolls along the top of the fabric. Oh my goodness, and this so Teflon nice. one, that's just like on your saucepans. And it's got no drag, mm. so it's not like the metal. If you don't have either of those, this is scotch tape, scotch magic tape. You can just put that on the bottom of your, your foot cut out where the piece is on your foot and then that also will help. So if you haven't got a walking foot, it's not the end of the world. I know a lot of... Um, I'm learning so much from dress her. <laughs> I love her. Dressmakers and don't use them a lot. Oh, I know. You're doing brilliantly. I, I don't think I'm shaking quite you as much. You <laughs> are doing brilliantly. You really <laughs> are. Right, so now I'm just going to walk... Literally walk around walk the down outside, the, yeah. Go. I'm just going to uh, go around the outside. Do you want to take the speed down to your level that you feel comfortable with? Because oh, I know yes, with your feather weight, you can do it you, yeah. you, with your foot with this one. It's I'm not a fast sewer. <laughs> you take as long as you I, like. I would rather, because I use a lot of binding, a lot of bias binding, mm. copious amounts of bias binding, um, I would rather take longer and get it right exactly. than go miles and miles on and find that you've got two inches right yep. at the beginning that you haven't caught at the back. So I do tend to go slow. I won't know when I was making faster, that quilt. I? I was using. Um, I haven't opened my new box, my new machine yet. Ooh, so I was I using an older one, and I had sewn all my strip pieces, pieces together. And as you say, I had about five inches at the beginning of each one, and I only noticed once I'd cut it. Oh, which is Eve really really helpful. Yeah. Couldn't figure out why my pieces had fallen apart. So top tip: make sure you've got the beginning bit of yeah. your strip sets. So we're actually sewing them down. The, the fuser web is only really to help you keep it in place while you're sewing. Ooh. Does this have a needle down function? It does. So do you see where the locking stitch is? Just next to it. That one? That's the locking stitch, the one next oh, to it. Oh, it doesn't automatically no. go? Oh. The 560 does, that um, one doesn't. But if you put the needle down, you can rotate, pop down, yeah. then, then you can rotate from there. Because that's one thing that I do say to people that say oh what should I buy I think that's one of the functions that I think is fabulous on a it, machine it really is especially because I do a lot of applique well this one doesn't stay down but you have got that button as, as yeah. you get to one stitch away you can push it down it'll that's go it, to the so end. I can go there now perfect that's it oh and that's in a different place as well of course it is <laughs> there we go right so when we get to the end we're going to snip off leaving quite a a good length of thread Gosh, you make and it look then so to easy. finish off now because this is all going to the back here is all going to be enclosed you don't want to have this whoops that is quite long you don't want to have this coming undone so I've got a darning needle oh look I am shaking you're doing <laughs> fine honestly you really are and I'm going to take both of the both of the threads and drop it through and that drop first them hole. through the bottom. <gasps> I never realised people did that. That is so clever. Right, and I'm going to keep those separate from... Oh, and don't sew through your finger. No, please don't do that. <laughs> I'm sure there's a first aid kit here somewhere, but I don't actually... <laughs> oh, it is. And then... Oh, it's all right. If you do, I hear that Laura is first aid trained. So oh, that... oh, so am I, but I she... don't like blood. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think if you've stabbed yourself, you can actually treat yourself. I'm not sure how that works. My mum hit her head once in the garden. She stood up and the window was open Ooh. and, she, and she ha she's got white grey hair. And she stood up and did this and there was blood and I, I passed out. I, I wouldn't mum, have why, well I, <laughs> mum was going, Alison, Alison, Alison. <laughs> <laughs> right, so I've knotted those off. So all, you can so see adorable. all of these Even are knotted the back off. looks fabulous. <laughs> 
So what we've we've finished the front. We're going to do the pocket now. How are we doing on time? Oh, you're fine. Don't worry about time. All the instructions. We can do another have got... hour. I can do that demo <laughs> in ten minutes. It's easy. All the instructions have got all these details in. You've got a little dart at the bottom that gives you the the pocket mm -hmm. that stands out. So if you weren't going to do the pocket and you were going to do it like your you phone, would put that you on would just there. put that exactly yeah, as it you is. You would there. just put that on Fold there. the top over. Okay. Well, you're Shall not folding the like top that? over. It's, it, no, it's you don't bag. need to because it doesn't fray. No. Well, you don't. If, but, if you're going to make it for yourself, then do it that way. But with this, you're going to be putting in the bags of and things. Course, so yes, it's, so it's going to. Yeah. So um, this here with the dart, and then we've got the quarter inch, half inch fold at the top. What um, I'm going to have this. With pleasure. I've already done this on here, but I'll show you what makes the life a lot easier. If you get your ruler and your hair at all and just run that along the back mm -hmm. and then that makes it fold over easily. Do you know I've never had a hairer until... Oh they're marvellous aren't well, they? Well I've never done one and I did a class yeah. with Jenny Raymond and she says where's your hairer? Because I, I have <laughs> everything yeah. and she said that was the only thing I didn't have but I find I use it a, I yeah. use it a lot but it's one of those things that they last for decades because they're always so good yeah well at home I would change the the thread to a different color so oh, right. that it blended in and also at the top there is a it would be a lighter color but I'll carry on with the the black here you can pop the bobbin out the other machine if you want. No, it's all right. Are you sure? It'll just show up if I'm not straight, won't it? <laughs> no pressure. Don't look at Alison. Don't even watch this now. So we're just... So, Alison, so I've got an incredible top. nail envy. You have an incredible manicure on that. Well done. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and a very shiny diamond. Look go. at that. <laughs> My daughter will be laughing now. because. Why? Uh oh on Friday, uh, not last night, Thursday night, I, I messaged her and said, oh, I'm just cleaning my jewellery for the telly. Oh, good. She said, oh, Mum, that's really prepping. <laughs> <laughs> Quite, but you can tell it shows beautifully. Oh, thank you. How long have you been married? Uh, five years. Wonderful. Five years, yeah. Um, I moved up to Staffordshire um, five years ago. Becky's still down in Cornwall. Oh, what a beautiful so, part of the world. Yeah. We go down regularly when we can, of but course. we were supposed to be down for Easter and of course it all stopped. Yeah. And, and I would love to go down there now, you know, now that all the lockdown things have been relaxed. But my mum and dad live with us and dad's been shielding. So it's been... It's a small price to pay to yeah, keep everybody safe. It's very difficult, yeah. Right, reverse, I need reverse, there it is. So that's sort of it, yep. So I'm just <clears> going <throat> to fold over and then... So these darts, then I'm going to reverse them. Now, you, I mentioned to you before we went on about the needles. You're just using a normal standard universal, universal needle. Universal needle. That's brilliant. Yeah, no, no special thread, no special needle. Because I got very nervous about doing so many layers with <laughs> just a normal uh, universal. But if yeah. it works, that's brilliant. But I was, oh, these, I was um, so excited when I was doing it on the featherweight that I didn't even need a special foot. <laughs> well, speaking of special feet on your featherweights. Oh, yes, my walking so foot. So Alison and I collect <laughs> featherweight sewing machines. What years have you got? I'm um, assuming you've got more than one. Yes, I have. Yes. I've, well, I, got? I've got five singers. I've got Pearl, Pearl 1, Pearl 2, Pearl 3 and Pearl 4. Oh, brilliant. Because Pearl's a singer. Um, but the one that I use most is my 222. Yes. And that's a 59. Brilliant. So it's two years older than me. <laughs> and I, it down in the house, it's all I use. They're yeah. really beautiful machines. Yeah. So I folded those from corner to corner on that little half inch square there. And I'm just, <laughs> all the, the bits are in a different place. Look at the previous screen, you did well cleaning that diamond, look at that. Oh I did. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I adore jewellery, I absolutely adore jewellery. My so. first job when I left school was in a jeweller's. Was it? Yeah, it was lovely, trying on all the stuff you couldn't oh, afford. No. Something's gone wrong here. He's going well, clunk clunk underneath. That's alright, we just, Let's we just, stroke it gently uh, and entice it out. 
I think the most exciting thing I've ever done was I went to um, Tiffany on Fifth Avenue in New York. Oh, wow. As a typical tourist, went in and went, hello, what's your biggest diamond? <laughs> and this little man looked at me and said, trust me, I'm not going to steal it. I'm too fat to run. <laughs> and he looked at me and laughed and he brought out the stone and I put it in my head. I said, oh, that's pretty. How much is that? Seven million dollars. How much? Seven million dollars. Oh, and I looked goodness. at this and I said to Andrew, I couldn't run, could I? Yeah. <laughs> it was beautiful though. Help me out here, John. Where have I put the bobbin? Um, I've just taken it out. Is it in your hand? Have I dropped it? No. Did it go that way? Nope. But if you reach behind you and pop the bobbin out of the 560 on the floor by your feet, you can all look at me while Alison Every, does that. Everyone's going to be going, it's behind you. <laughs> it's fine. Don't worry. We do it all the time. And it's always the case of you know what happens. You take the bobbin out, do something with it, and it falls on the floor. Oh, that's silly. It must have rolled somewhere. Yeah. Right. OK. Really? So... Alison, mm -hmm. would you pick up your bag with the tan kit on it? That one? I have to do a stock warning. Ooh. There are five of these left. Oh so if goodness. you are interested in getting the tan one, there are only five left. And I'm hearing there are a few in your baskets. So if you want to check out, you're only going to be paying the one P&P all day. But until you've actually checked out, unfortunately, it's not yours. Uh, only five of the tan left. You can tell how popular they are. Mm, lovely. Oh, four. Oh. <laughs> there are only four left of the tan. Right. There we go. Now, fingers crossed. You'll be fine. Do you know, I very rarely use a stitch. Oh, actually, it's, 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 it's okay. It's, oh, no, I will do it again because it's only, you do need to reverse it, really. Because this is another you thing you don't want to. You just take a little bit of extra time, get it done right. And there's no hurry at all. We can be, we're here all day. Were you watching me or Alison? We're going to entertain you one way or the other. There we go. That's better. So we're going to snip off the corner. So I can now announce we have officially sold out of the tan. Oh, can gosh. someone tell me which one the tan is here? Middle one. Gone. Oh dear. <laughs> Don't be oh dear. Is this the tan one there? Can I ask you to just pop That's that the underneath one. the counter? I love doing this when we sold out of something. We just hide it away. And right. Alison, 30 minutes into your demo, yes. you've already sold out of one colorway. Yes. Congratulations. Right, now I'm eyeing this up. It's such a beautiful product. Oh, thank you. I'm eyeing this up so that it's in the center. And you're using a friction pen. And I'm now. using a friction pen because I'm going to put a, a, a dot. In theory. Yeah, there we are. Because what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the sides of the pocket. We're not going to do it flat because we need it to stand out. So I'm going to bring in the side of the pocket. We went in half an mm -hmm. inch there, so this is going to come in so that the stitching <gasps> is half an inch. Oh, you clever lady, and then you so, okay. And then you do the same the other side, and that makes the, so the pocket actually stand out. See, I've never made anything like this. Oh, it's good fun. That is really good fun. I've lost it now. There it is. <laughs> so from start to finish, how long would this take you? Oh, half an hour. Half an hour? Yeah, it's, okay. not, it's a really quick We're going to say an hour make. and a half for people like me who've never <laughs> done it before. But the pattern does look really, really thorough and you can easily follow the pictures. Do you want to... We can switch to the 560. It's right behind you. Whatever. Yeah, Back I always on. reboot them when they're having a moment like that. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for the quarter inch, you just need to use the plus minus closest to me. Doesn't like that at all. That's all right. We'll go forwards. That's it. Right, OK. So when we're, we're sewing this down, you want to fold this up because you want this line to be straight. So you're folding that up. I can't find the... <laughs> It. Doesn't like it. Not liking that. No. No, there's something. Is it the bobbin gone, gone again? Something's gone awry. Do you want to, if you disconnect the plug on the sides, 
I might need you to just change the bobbin, but if you'd like, the 560 is just behind you. That's got Shall white I thread try on the top. that one? By all means. Might need you to just to change your walking foot. <gasps> oh. Don't worry. I'll try it without the walking foot. Are you sure? Uh, I'll try it. This it could be interesting. <laughs> and unfortunately, under the new rule... Oh, you've got a cable stuck in there, mind. It's gone. <laughs> what was that? Of course. Why are you doing that? Do you mind if I just go through the kits and what yes, we've got in these wonderful said. bags? So this colourway, what if we called this one? <laughs> this is the brown one. Yes. Sir. This is the brown colourway. We've already sold out of the tan colourway. So let me show you what you're getting in the brown colourway. This has got the gorgeous set of instructions. I'm just going to move that over a little bit. There we go. So these are the set of instructions you've got, and the instructions are really clear. Loads of pictures all the way through. You've got all your templates, um, you've got all the measurements on the back ready to go for that. You've got all the fabric. First of all, you get a free bag of poo bags. Can't go wrong with that. So you've got the little bag of poo. They're called pogies. Yes. That even looks like Marge, doesn't it? They're, they looks are. Looks a little bit like Marge. <laughs> I did start saying they're recyclable. They're not recyclable. <laughs> <laughs> they're biodegradable. biodegradable. <laughs> but so that this is what mean... you're making for your eyes and your mouth. That and doesn't nose. mean that people can hang them on trees. Don't even. Don't even. <laughs> so that's for your eyes and your nose. Um, and then this is the fabric you're going to use for the lining of your bag. So one side's a little tacky and the other one's not. This is waterproof, so once you put your treats and everything in there, you can wipe that out afterwards. You've got a um, little thing of, we call this a heat and press. Fuser web. Fuser web. Mm. Um, and then we've got another one of these, which is your pocket on the back. And then this is your base colour that you're going to be using. And then these are the details for your nose, your ears, uh, the muzzle in the ears. Yeah. And then you've got all your hardware in here. And all the hardware that you need to do this. But don't forget, when you do get your little bag, you're going to have this little charm on the front that you can pop onto the, um, the, the what are we calling the strap connectors? At the end of your, end of your, um, the end of this thing, sorry, I don't know what the right word for it is, when you're putting the strap oh, on. Oh, what, the pins, the pins that are in the, the yes, clasp? Yes, the, the pins. I mean, I've one. put them up there, but on my other little one I've got here, I think it looks quite cute down there. <laughs> yes. Well, the great thing is you've got the charm. You can put it wherever you think would work. Clavin nose ring. <laughs> the nose ring, that would be <laughs> quite cute. And then you've got your um, bag clasp that you would be able to then open up. I'm not going to try and open that because I'll probably break it. You've got the wonderful strap that goes around your, your body because it's a crossover strap. And then you've got this wonderful, um, what do we call that? That's an eyelet. Eyelet. I was going to call it a grommet, but I don't know. That's an eyelet where your little, your bags would come through yeah. there as well. Has that machine treated you a little better? And I have to say, I've got no special foot on and it's working a dream. <laughs> I think, I, in my personal experience, I find they get a little bit emotional sometimes, the machines. Right. They have a moment. So everybody comments about how I always stroke the machine to coax it along. It was when I reversed it. I do find it, when you do it. That it didn't like it on the, ah, yeah, it's fine. So that's brilliant, the start? fact that there's nothing special on here, this machine at all. So I've pulled in this side the same. I'll just reverse that a little. Yeah. Perfect. So the colour that we haven't shown you the full kit of is the grey kit. Could I trouble you to just grab the bag and just show people what the grey kit looks like? That's what's on the graphics at the moment. So this you keep one. on your little Oh, this one here. There. It's so adorable, all of them. You don't have to put the eye patch on. <laughs> I love it, though. <laughs> I think it's really great. And the great thing is, is the way you've done the kits, you can personalise them as mm. well, which I think is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Brilliant. So I've done that on both sides. Mm -hmm. And for the bottom, you're just going to pull that up and sew from the seam to seam. And are you doing a quarter-inch seam on that? No, you're, you're just going along edge? the edge, as if you Perfect. were doing a... Um, applique, really. Right. Oh, I'm thrilled that this machine is working without a walking foot because it just shows that it does. You don't have to have anything special for it. There we go. Well, other than your, your gorgeous kit. Oh, and that one, the the, um, the needle stays down on that machine. Oh, fantastic. 
So there we are, there's the poppet. We don't put the um, eyelet on yet because we're going to be using this in, in, inside and uh -huh. we we'll, don't need the bulk. So again we're going to make the channel. We want three quarters of an inch to make the channel for the clasp. So you take your hair tool again and at a three quarter inch point, and there's the front. Oh, I've done this one already. So that's going to fold over the three quarters as an inch, but you need to make sure that your side here actually comes past where the shaping starts because oh, you're going right. to take the nice soft side, not the slightly rubbery side, and you're going to place Attach that, that in, in as you go. and you're going to put that down. You are so good at this. I've made a few. But that is so clever. <laughs> it's something so simple, but that's a really good tip to be able to show people how to do that. Do you mind if you just do that again? I'll do it just on the so other side. Can, I'll do it on the other side so people can see that. So, so pay we've got the three quarters of an inch. We've got the three quarters of an inch. Yes. But it's got to come down past this shape because you're going to sew right. from where that shape starts right the way across. Yes. So let me just check that that one's over as well. So there we go. Right, and then we're going to put this so the Inside. soft and luxurious side the, to the top. This, yeah. This one here, if you are using it for dog treats, that would get a Tap, little bit yeah. crummy. So you're just lining that, just the, the before you put that down, mm -hmm. before you put that down, the, the, sorry, can you just take that clip off? I just want to see that. So you're lining that up almost to the edge of that line. No, I'm not using that line at all. It's you're the just shaping. You're lining it perfect. The, because you've got the shaping in that of as course. well. So you're lining that so up So you're lining you up the shaping. Brilliant. And then by folding that over, you'd automatically catch it along. Yeah. Right. Something you see, for there. me, I'd never made this, so that would be a really important yeah. tip for me to know. So then we're going to go across. And you, and you need do a, a couple of stitch on there as couple well. of little stitches because at all these points, they're all points that are going to Straight get stretched. Across, yeah. Ah. Or you might need to slow your machine down yeah. a little bit for yourself there. See, so you can tell I was using that it yesterday. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is pushing the fabric a little bit. Okay. I'll see, so that I'll tip see of being it... able to put the, um, the scotch tape at the back of it might help yeah. this along. have got a huge amount of fabric going through there. Walking foot would help you so much more for that. There we go. I need to hold that over because that's moved. Yeah, it could have done with the walking foot really. Oh, I could try. I could put the Teflon foot on, couldn't I? That's the only thing I with won't. national telly is that you do have that problem that if something does go wrong, yes, you look. have that make it work moment. This won't be my proudest make, <laughs> but let's try the Teflon foot. It's telly sewing. <laughs> any, any one of my demos that I've made on air have always ended up being um, in the charity box, as it were. Yeah. <laughs> right, so let's take this one. Is that one working a little easier? No. It's, if you could see what's yes. happening, it's pushing yeah. it, it's actually sticking along. It does need along. a walking foot. Right? It does need a walking foot, really. Let's have a look at the roller foot. Let's go the whole hog. Well, you've got the little box underneath you. If you want to swap the roller feet over, I can chat at the walking foot back over. It's up to you. Right, so let's try this. I've never used one of these, so we'll see. That sounds a little better. It's not perfect, I have to say. But... Ooh. 
but we'll carry on. <laughs> Let's look at the outside. <laughs> the outside doesn't look bad. <laughs> Got so many, when any, so anybody, many threads. When everybody bring, anybody brings me a quilt to do, they're always like, oh, don't look at my seams. I said, well, look at them now, because it's the last time anybody's yeah. going to see them. So with you, you're now going to make that on the inside. People won't see that. No, that's right. So now we're going to put together the lining. Now, with that fabric being slightly tacky, would you use your Teflon foot now as well, or your roller I foot? I would put everything yeah. through the walking, the walking foot, foot okay. yeah. But the great thing is, is I can't one believe that the featherweight I just sailed through. Something else you can do, you can release the foot pressure a little as well. That, uh, that can help. I, I didn't know you could do that. You can yeah. adjust the foot pressure on it. Yeah, if you're using something that you don't want to I need have you to squashed, come on a lot squashed more. down. <laughs> this is brilliant. Right, now, I would. I can't use that with that one. No, maybe the Teflon. I think this will be all right with this one because we've we've it's only the sticky top that actually that actually brings it through but we're going to now so no not that side we're going to sew a quarter of an inch seam all the way along down and then three quarters of an inch in and stop and we're going to start stitching at the point we've got a locking stitch here haven't we the point where the shaping starts. So we've got about eight minutes left, not to rush you, just to let you know. No problem. Oh, we have a message in. Message in from Tracy. Morning, Tracy. That's Tracy from Canada. Do you know Ooh, that there's a lady that gosh. tunes in from Canada? Now, bearing in mind, what time is it now? It's about four o'clock in the morning for her, almost. Wow. So she's busy watching every morning. <laughs> morning, Tracy. She's saying, great demo with Alison making her bag. Oh, thank you. <laughs> She's also got a featherweight and she's their little workhorses, aren't They're they? They're fabulous, fabulous machines. We're just putting up the price. You know we're doing that. <laughs> <laughs> she says, the Lone Star quilt behind you is fabulous. Re really enjoying watching the show. And thank you, Alison, for all your tips and advice. Oh, thank you. Well, thank you, Tracy. It's lovely to have you. And that's the great thing about Sewing Street is because of YouTube, you can watch it literally anywhere in yeah. the world. And she's watching live. Wow. Which is that's great. That's dedication to sewing. Tis, tis. And Sewing Street. <laughs> exactly. Right, so what I've done now is I've gone all the way around and I've left this hole open there because to that's where we're going to turn. And with the normal bag, you would just go all the way around. But with this one, because we've got ooh, all that, because we've got all this stuff here, we need to tuck that into the lining to ah, get it out so of the way. so you can sew it properly. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to go and take that now. Are you all right with that without the walking foot? Yes, because this should be okay, but it's only the top. Oh, of the course, top. when it's on the slippy It's only side. the top. This is just like a fabric backing. Perfect. So, um, How long we got? Six minutes. Nearly done. You'll, you'll have that whole bag done yeah, by then. Yeah, we're nearly done. <laughs> Probably turning it through will take the longest. <laughs> and I can't even offer to help <laughs> you for that today. <laughs> right, so we'll go through. Now when I'm turning a corner, I'd, I've no idea where it came from, who told me that it works. Mm -hmm. Rather than going straight to the corner, I do one stitch <gasps> on a diagonal. Oh, that's genius. And that helps when you're turning through. You of get course. you get a, a, a more point. of a point, yeah. And that's what I love about that with sewers, is that it doesn't matter who they are, those tiny little tips that just make your journey that little bit easier. Yeah. I love the fact we all share those together. I think it's great. That one. Okay, we're just going to snip off the corners. And that just makes it easier to get your yeah. point, doesn't it? Take away 
the bulk, it's not too much. Well, I think with your sewing machine putting up its megabytes and having a moment, uh, <laughs> you've done incredibly well. So this is, you have to be quite forceful with this. And if you can get the whole of the bottom through the hole first, this is where it's crucial that you have the right um, the right fabric really, the faux leather, because if you've got anything that's too thick, you'd turn. never turn it through. Yeah. There she comes. There we go. Have we got something I can... Ah. I love that stiletto. <laughs> haven't got one of these either. They're really good. Oh wow, yeah, look at that. incredibly good for pointing. <laughs> Just don't push too hard because no, I have I'm gonna pushed it through the other my end. fabric. Yeah, use yeah. the other end. It's got that little protective I did think that when it. I was uh, pushing that through. Oh, you can tell that that's got like a rubberized backing because the rubber end of the tool got caught there. There we go. Now you can either hand sew it or just tuck in the bottom of the lining. I think you'd hand sew it, wouldn't I you? I would. Yep. <laughs> but You're a consummate professional. I do like uh, hand finishing, I must admit. There go. I think you've nailed the timing on this as right, well. Right, let's take the... little bag here. Mm. So be careful when you're opening that you don't lose this pin. <laughs> and Can we ask you how you know that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have a few clasps without pins. <laughs> well I have to say I keep dropping things in my studio, metal things, but I have to say these, these um, pin bowls which have got the magnetic, magnetic thing in it, are yeah. brilliant for that because you just literally take your empty pin bowl and go over oh, the floor of course, yes. and you zap it. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> there was that, something that's plastic not metal. in there. <laughs> <laughs> there you are, Michael. You can see that that magnetic pin cushion you bought me. It really does Perfect. work. They're very good. Yeah. Right, so now we're Hello, just going to push this, <laughs> push these through. Does this have an up and a down? Nope. I mean, I, I do put this larger hole at the top because that's neater. Because you're actually going to pull the pin through and then use a pair, little pair of pliers to put the ring in. So we've got... Oh, ignore that stitching. But then we're going to push through the... Pin. Considering you did it on live telly and the machine died on you, you did really, <laughs> really well. You're doing fantastic. There we go. Well. And I've got a little pair of pliers here. And then you take the end. Pliers not included. And just roll. No. So there we go. That's did your... you actually just roll that? Oh, that yeah, is so just clever. Roll that up to match that one. This one already is in when you get your clasp and you just put this one on the end there. And then to open that, you just press it together. You push the two ends together. Oh, that is so clever. So for your eyelet, make a little, a little cross in your bag. Gosh, you are good at this. Cut off the points so that the, the eyelet can come through. You can discard the washer, you don't need the washer. Now that washer I would keep because I keep having my hose pipe at home. Oh, that's very <laughs> kind. The hose pipe at home uses a washer like that and oh, it keeps really? wearing out. I'll send you them all. <laughs> <laughs> I have loads. <laughs> and then that just clips down on. And that's it? That's it. Oh, Alison, that is so brilliant. And then when you're doing the strap, you pull up the outer and cut off about two inches of the internal of the the strap and that goes through 
Yeah, I haven't got time to do it. But you... You do, we can go over. Are you sure? A minute or two. If I just do one? Yep. Okay. What do I do with that thread? Let's have this one. The, the next hour is just me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> This is where you're going to see how much I'm shaking because I'm going to thread a needle. Oh, we got to. Oh, yeah. Oh, what skill thread, that you're thread going is this? To... This is lovely thread. Um, yes, it's under there. We've got a whole um, collection of them. Oh, that went better than I expected. <laughs> I was going to say, it normally <laughs> takes me a good 10 minutes to thread those. So we're going to have double thread. A knot in the bottom. Right, where shall I I'll go there. So we're going to pull up, we're going to have the knot in inside, we're going to pull the needle up through the top, put the knot inside and then knot off one side and we're going to go through to the other side, knot off that side. You make it look so easy, that's brilliant. And then, it's easier if you let go of your needle and just wrap, wrap your thread round. I do it for about a quarter of an inch, but because of time, I'll just finish it off. Oh, there we go. And then that gets snipped off. Oh, that's brilliant. close to your stitching. Oh, Alison, that's there we excellent. Are. So the one you're working with at the moment, that was our tan one, which yep. we've now sold out yep. with. So do you so want to show me the other two bags that are finished brown. and show me which one's which? Let's and move the, the tan one out the the tan one out the way. So that one's sold out, so we pop that gone. under the counter. So show me the brown one and just this show me here. exactly the finished product of the brown one. Do you want to move that a little bit towards you? There we go. That way. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, so you've got your your ripstop nylon lining. This one, I've got grey on here because I've been making up these ones out of stuff that I had left over. But right. in your kit, you will have the same colour for your pocket as the actual bag itself. That one hasn't got a pocket. But That's the wrong one. It's this one. So it's the same colour for the back and the yeah. pocket in the brown one. Yeah. Wrong one. I've got that's it. for I got the it. muzzle. There should be a... Got it. That's it. So that's so the pocket then for your brown one. And then for the grey one, if you don't mind showing I the grey one. The oh, you haven't on got the a back, pocket but there. You'll have grey. But you've got that grey yeah. piece at the back you, yeah. for your pocket for your as pocket, well. For your pocket, yeah. So those are the two colourways that we've got left. And you can tell it's sold so well. Tan one has sold out already. And Alison, I'm so grateful for your time on this. You were exceptional. <laughs> you were really, really good. I should have brought my feather away. You so much. Now you can go and have yourself a little gin and tonic. I, will, I mean, yes. coffee. <laughs> for the next hour while we do our Lone Star. We're just going to redo the set. We'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you so much. <sighs> Hi, I'm John Cole Morgan and I'm here to give you my top tips on how I go about enjoying my sewing experience. My first top tip, as everybody knows, rotary cutter safety. If you're not using it and it's not on the mat, that blade must be locked. Please be safe. My second top tip is always buy more fabric than you need. If you don't have it, it's always going to sell out. You're going to struggle to find it. And when you do, it's going to cost you a lot more than when you were going to buy it originally. So buy it all. You always regret the bit you didn't buy. My next tip is Positive or negative, always listen to the advice and opinions of other people. Even if you ignore them, everybody has a different perspective, everybody has a different take on things, and it might help you along the way. The next top tip I have is always buy the most expensive and the most useful and the most practical for your brain product that works for you. Some people prefer different things, buy what works for you. And my last tip is, this is fun, this is enjoyable, and make sure you are enjoying it. Because there's nothing worse than carrying on with something and hating it and not enjoying it. You need to make sure that you're having fun. Those are my top tips and how it is that I enjoy my sewing experience. I hope they help you, because they have helped me. 
for more handy tips and demonstrations, make sure you watch us on our Freeview channel 74, Sky channel of 670, otherwise follow us on YouTube on Sewing Street, where you can catch up on past demonstrations and shows. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also a plique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember, but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hello, I'm Kerry from Living in Loveliness and I'm delighted to be part of the Sewing Street team. I'm based in Wolverhampton and I absolutely love working with fabulous fabrics. In particular, I love working with fat quarters and showing you how to get the most from your scraps. I love bringing communities of sewists together and encouraging people to sew for greater causes. Most recently, we have been sewing for our NHS and key workers. Um, I look forward to bringing you hints, tips and techniques. I'll see you soon. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. See you on the show. Hi there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love for you to join me for my birthday celebrations on Monday the 6th of July. We're going to be live for five hours, all the way from 8 o'clock in the morning through to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We're going to have special deals for you, um, they've got lots of special offers, I'm going to be signing photographs to everybody that places an order and there's going to be demonstrations from both myself and from Delphine Brooks as well. So hopefully you can join me on Monday the 6th at 8 o'clock in the morning. I'll see you then. Hello, I'm John Cole Morgan and welcome back for our nine o'clock hour. We have got the most incredible quilts. Hmm? Brand new. Brand new kits. Three of them. Three different colorways. This is our pastel colorway. I don't know about you, but I am absolutely besotted with this quilt. It is, uh, I haven't actually measured it. That's a good point. I never measured it. But look at this lone star. Is that not just the most important? 
oh, I just love it, absolutely love it. And none of my points matched and I don't mind. We're gonna go and talk about that in a little bit. Let me show you what this is and what you're getting in it. First of all, the set of instructions. You're getting a wonderful set of instructions, loads of photographs of exactly how you're doing it. Huh? Yeah, so loads of instructions, lots of different ways of doing it. Um, and all the pictures in there, I, th I hope it's user friendly. I wrote it, I understood it. Hopefully that'll all work. We've had all the team look over it as well and double check it. So it should be absolutely perfect on it. But again, if it isn't and you've got a question, get hold of me, I'll easily be able to help you with that. Now the colorway that I did this in was the pastel colorway. We've got a rogue pin here. Where's my pin box on? There we go. Sorry. We're going to start with a pastel one. So we're getting a black, we're getting a grey colourway with that. So it's exactly what we've got behind us. Dark grey and, pa and the pastel colourway that we've got here. Let me show you. Yes. So let me show you what the pastel pops, uh, barley pops look like because some of you may have seen the pastel barley pops before, some of you may not. So let me show you what the barley pops look like here. You're getting up two of every colour and why this is so brilliant for this quilt is when you've got two of every colour you can actually go and you can make this quilt be exactly the same for all eight of your diamonds. So you'll see I've got a green there. I've got a pink there, I've got a teal there, and you can see, now, I did get it confused for one of my blades, so you'll see over here, where is it there, I got it the wrong way round. But you can see I've got the green all the way around for the rest of them. So it does take a little bit of time, and I'll show you at what point what you're doing everything. But if you've got two of every single one of these, you can make all of your diamonds be identical. And then it creates a very different quilt, because you can do it scrappy as well. You can do this with whatever um, jelly roll you'd like. But I think doing it where it's got that uniformity, I think it just creates a really interesting look because then you can see I've got the dark points at the corner all the way along and because batiks in, itself, uh, in themselves change, you'll have a very different look with it even though you can see those two colours are identical, those two are the same but they're inverse. It just makes a very different quilt because these change down the strip of fabric, you've still got the same colour, but it gives you that little bit of a variety, which is the joy of doing this in the barley pots, which is why we chose them. So the pastel one is what we're calling the rainbow. So the one you got on the screen at the moment is what's behind me. So although I previously referred to this as a pastel, that is just simply because this is a lighter barley pop than a previous rainbow, the one we had before, and what I've called pastel in the past. So this is our rainbow barley pop for today, um, and you're going to be getting the rainbow barley pop and three meters of this gorgeous dark grey, and you can see, and you're getting the instructions, so you're getting all three of these together, the instructions, the barley pop, and our three meters of fabric. So that's what you're getting for $69.99 today. But the, do you want me to show the fabric first or do you want me to show the fabric after? Yeah. Cool, no, I don't mind. Sorry, I'm just checking where we are. So the great thing with this, is you're getting two of every color and they all merge together. Um, and you can see that you've got this gorgeous pink there tying into the pink there. And you've got all these different colours and the, the batik technique is that all of these are done by hand and dyed in the sun. So when you are getting two that are identical, even though they're identical fabric and the colouring's the same, you can see the technique that they've used, they're not identical. So you'll have a little clear patch there where it's the exact same spot on the piece next to it. And I think these probably were lying next to each other if you look at the cut line. You can see you've got that interesting little bit there. So that's the great thing with these bar um, barley batiks is that they are all so different and so unique. And the different colours go so, so well in, as you can see in the quilt behind. So the, this one we can see in the quilt behind us. So let me show you the, the blue colorway that we've got. So this is, you, again, you're going to get the set of instructions. I'm going to put the instructions, if I do that. We have had the barley pops on, I love them. Oh, that's not, there we go. 
You've been singing that before, yeah, I love it. Right, so we've got that there. You're getting the wonderful barley pop that goes with it, and then you're getting three meters of, is this ivory or white? We're just double checking that. But what's so great about this is that it just brings this barley pop to, the barley pops to life with these background colors. And the instructions are written for all of the different colorways. This is white, so you've got that wonderful, beautiful contrast between the two there. And then our very last colorway is this colorway here, which is called Autumn. I think we've called it Autumn, is that right? Got the Autumn colorway, which we've got, and they just work so beautifully together. We've got what we call beige, and we've got this gorgeous, these um, gorgeous autumns here. And that's what I'm gonna do with my demo today, so you'll be able to see how gorgeously well these all go together. So you're getting three meters of this fabric. All of this fabric is 44 inches wide. Um, I'm not gonna unfold the whole thing, but it's three meters long, so that's what, almost one, and uh, almost two of me. But that's half of it and it's just an enormous amount of fabric, three meters. So if I pop that there, there's another rogue pin. These pins seem to be running away. But we get our lovely little ma magnetic one. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Caught all the pins. So you're going to then see, this is three meters. And that's only half, because I'm not, I'm not sure I could open all of that and show you the whole thing, because it's such a huge amount of fabric. So I'm just going to make a cut quickly, because I need to use some of this for my demonstration. Now, I am effectively eyeballing this. Do not use your rotary cutter like this if you're not comfortable doing it. That was only because I needed to cut a little bit of fabric off there for my demo. So let's start at the very, very beginning. The first thing you're going to do when you get your collection is you're going to take your barley pop and you're going to put it out you're going to take them all out and you're going to sort through all of your colors. Now in the pattern, I refer to a dark, medium and light value color. What does that mean? So of the three colors that you can see there, that is a very, very clear showing of dark, medium and light. So I've called these the dark, medium and light values. And when we look at the quilt behind me here, you will notice that I've got a medium, a dark and a light. And then I've got a dark, a medium and a light. And all the way through, I've tried to either have a medium, a light and a dark in these three sections all the way along, because I think it just gives that quilt, the quilt a little bit more interest. So what I did was I took my, my barley pops and I separated them into my dark colorways and looked and saw, nope, that's a dark as well. And then I'd take that and go, actually, I think that's a light. So I put that there. And you can change them as you go, because if you find you're getting everything as a medium or everything as a dark, that's not right. So it's a case of just going through and deciding for yourself what you consider to be dark, medium, and light. You see, I think that's quite light, while some of you may think that's a medium. And when you start going through the fabric and you're picking out what you think would work and what isn't, it just gives you, you should be able to then split these into three piles. You're then going to choose 36 strips. So I chose 36, I chose 12 from each colorway. So I had 12 light, 12 medium, and 12 dark. And then what I did is I sewed those into strip sets. And of course, anybody who's sewn strip sets before, let me just remind you if you've forgotten, you need to have I dropped something there, but anyway. So you need to have your strip sets going. So let me, sh I'll do that in a bit. So once you've chosen your three colorways, so I've chosen that as my medium, and these are all width of fabric, 
I've chosen that one as my dark, as my light. And I've chosen that one as my dark. And I think you can see that that's my dark, that's my medium, and that's my light. So in the pattern, when I refer to the color values, you'll be able to see that that's what I mean. And for example, that one, that's my dark, that's my medium, that's my light. That's what I've called them. And on this one, and this is entirely, a, it's your, you know, I value that as my dark, medium, and light, whereas you may say that's your dark, that's your medium, that's your light. It's a case of just playing with it and seeing how you go. That w I thought was my dark, that was my medium, and that was my light. If you're struggling to figure out how to do that, really, really easy way of doing it is, Pop all of these on the floor or on your sewing mat or wherever, or on a design wall. Take your phone, take a photograph of it, and when it says apply filter, put the black and white feature on and you'll be able to see then what is dark versus what is light because the greys in between it will show you where your mediums are. So that's my little top tip on getting the bundles chosen together. Then what you're going to do is you're going to sew these full width of fabric all the way down. So I'm going to put this as dark light medium. So I'm going to sew my medium to my light, edge to edge, full width of fabric. You're doing a full quarter inch seam all the way down. Ooh. Making sure you've got your quarter inch all ready. So I've also, what I've done is I've pulled my threads out of my machine so I know that that's the start of my sewn line because you can't sew these um, strip sets in the same direction. You need to alternate directions otherwise you'll get a natural bow in your fabric which you definitely do not want. Don't worry, there are only two of these. And it does go, and I sit down and get all 36 of my strip sets sewn together. I separate them into my 12 little blocks and then I sew them all together in one sitting. Just make sure you check your bobbin as you go. Now again, you'll see what I'm doing is I'm making sure that I'm not using my thread cutter. Um, I'm pulling the threads out because then I know where the start and the end is. So I know that's where I started. So I know when I sew my next strip on, that's where I'm going to end. So I now take my dark color and I line that up on my light because that's the way I've chosen to do it. And I pull my strip thread, my threads out. And there we go. So then I'm just gonna do, we need that sort of bouncy music to go keeping you going, yes, Benny Hill, something like that. Oh. Wow, I can now officially do the stock warning. Um, I was going to do this later, but I'm going to do it now. The under the sea, we only have four of these left. Um, so I was going to do this at the end because I didn't think that would sell quite as well as it has. I'm not going to do a full thing on it, but what I wanted to just show you is this is what I just chose this blade of just random pieces that I then sewed together. And then that blade will go in here. And you'll see I've chosen a light color at my beginning. And the reason you want that is if you've got this as the same all the way along for all of your eight points, that will be your star. So you've got the light on one end and the dark on the other. So if I put this on the quilt, you can see if I chose that dark purple as my central star, that's what it would come out with. Or if I had my white, 
you could do it there. Now, personally, I have actually, I made this quilt very, very quickly the other day, and I literally finished it, put the last seam on, went over, because I went and went a little bit mad and bought several of these, um, and I pulled one out and started making the exact same thing in this colorway, because I think it is absolutely exquisite. Um, so that is just gonna show you, to give you a bit of an idea of what it looks like. And I was going to wait to the end of the show to show you because I think it is such a beautiful, beautiful colourway. And you can just see how gorgeously that pops on the white. So I think that's just something to be aware of. We've only got eight left. And remember, if you haven't... How many? Oh, four left. Sorry, four left. Um, if you haven't got it checked out yet, please make sure you check out. Because once it's sold, it's sold. And it's only sold once you've checked out. Oh. We've only got two left. So if you want it, please check out now. We don't want you missing out. There's not a huge amount. Well, there's only two left. As you can see, that was a good reason to jump to that. So the two things that are most important on, or three things that are most important on this quilt is your quarter inch seam. Now we've spoken previously about quarter, in my block of the week, we've spoken about quarter inch seams, scant quarter inch seams, all of that, but what is the most important on this quilt is consistency. Of all the quilts you ever make, this one is so important to be consistent. So I don't suggest that you start this project and then take it away and do it on another machine or leave it for, for weeks on end and come back. I do think that if there's one section that you do do all in one go, it is making these strip sets because I think you are then going to have the most consistent seams that you can get because it is so important that your seams are the same all the way through and you will see why in a few minutes. So that's the first important thing. The second most important thing is your pressing. Now there are many different theories of what the best way of doing this is. You do what works best for you. The first thing I do, and normally I've got this on an ironing board at home, is I set my seam all the way along the quilt. Oh, I need to put that up a little bit. I set my seam all the way along the quilt before I do anything. Then, once I've set my seam, I will then roll that back ever so gently and without pulling or stretching the fabric, I let the nose of the iron push that to one side. Now, for somebody who always presses their seams open, you will see I have now not pressed my seams open. I have pressed to one side. This is going to help you later on when you're putting everything together because having your seams nest on this project is a little bit easier than having them pressed open. But again, that is a personal preference. There is no right or wrong. You must do what works best for you. And there we go. So the pressing is so important. Just take your time on it. Um, and then I've set both seams effectively. And what I'm doing now is the other way of doing it. So that was the first way of doing it. The other way is I just put a gentle little bit of pressure. You can see that I've got my, my, my seams just moving over there as I put it. Just gently push, pull it. And then as you're pulling it along, you follow with your iron. That's another way of making sure that you do it. Either way that you do it, what you're looking for is a nice, clean, consistent pressing on every single piece. So you want every single piece to be exactly the same width. And the reason being is when you start cutting your strip sets is that if they're not the same width, your diamonds are going to be slightly out. So those are the first of the two most important sections that you're doing. And you can, I just then, once I've done that, I'm going to go back and look. And I can see over here, I've got a little bit of a fold. So I then just go and double check that I've got this as flat as it can go, making sure it's as smooth as it can be. And once I've done the pressing, I do actually turn my steam on and make sure that it's all as flat as possible and doing it there. 
And once I've got this nice and pressed, and I know it looks like this is a really laborious task, but I promise you now, if you get this little bit right, and you take your time with it, your job is so much easier after this. So now, once I've done that, my piece is as flat as it can go. I'm using my best press, because the best press is your best friend for this. And I'm going to spray some of my best press on it, just to get this as flat and as starched as possible. The reason I want the starch in it is because every single part of the quilt, once you've cut it, is on the bias. Now the way that I've explained in the pattern to do it is you should help with your bias. Bias could be a whole class all on its own. So if you don't know very much about bias, please do some research on it. There are many, many really good videos to watch um, and tutorials about what bias is. So just check that uh, before you start sewing. Best Press will definitely help with the bias process, but just make sure that you're checking out what bias is, understand bias before you start this quilt because you do not want to be ending up with stretchy, lumpy seams because your quilt will go a little bit wonky in the middle. Now, the best way with dealing with bias on this is you're going to, so when you're cutting these, this is all cut on the 45 degree angle. So what I recommend in the pattern is you fold your fabric in half and then line it up on your 45 degree line over here. And what I, there we go. Perfect, now, as you can see just over here, not sure how far we can get in, my seam was not consistent here. So you will see I have got a little bit, this fabric is lined up perfectly over here, but I've got a tiny, sorry, that's all right, I'll move it around for you. So I've got this lined up perfectly over here, but over here I have a tiny little difference over here. You can see it's only a couple of threads, but there's a tiny little difference there. That's important because it just shows that my seam wasn't completely consistent. So when I say to you, make sure that your seam is consistent, your pressing is consistent, these need to be exactly the same width. So as you, this is even, this is just on one strip. So if it isn't, don't worry, it just means you may have a little bit of a wonky seam in that point, and it doesn't matter, it's all fine. So my rotary cutter is here somewhere, and I've buried it under six million fabrics. So I'm just gonna grab another one. So on the pattern as well, I tell you that you need to be cutting between a 10 inch mark. And the reason being is when I line my ruler up over here, let's say I cut my, my first cut here and keep going, I need to make sure that I've got enough to do four two and a half inch cuts all along the quilt, uh, all along the fabric. So you can see this is this bit here is my 20 inch mark. And if I move my finger along here, that's my 10 inch mark. So I need to check that my fold goes past this point and this bit extends. So when I'm cutting, I've got two full sections over here because we're trying to get eight cuts on the angle out of this one strip set. If you do get the eight cuts, then you're absolutely fine. You're not gonna have any problem with not having enough pieces and you'll have the grain all right. If you don't have eight cuts, you won't. So just take that time to check your strip sets are between 20 and between 10. It's really important that you do that. So now I'm going to take my first cut and there is no right or wrong which way you do the first cut, but you need to make sure that your fabric is lined up against the 45 degree line. Oh, I've just used the 12 and a half inch ruler here just because it's easier on the board cutting this. as quilters we all have this wonderful collection of fabric right so these are your leftover bits so you put those to one side now what I've got is I've got a 10 inch strip this way and I'm now going to cut these into two and a half inch strips all the way down Ooh. I try not to when I move these I don't move them far I don't 
stretch them or anything, I just literally slide them across the table because of the bias. And when the bias is in play, any form of movement of the fabric can cause a problem. So I just put my four little strip sets together. Right. So that's my first few steps in the process. Now what I do is, obviously I've got one that's facing up and one that's facing down. So when I rotate those over, and I've not got my seam showing, you'll see you've got two different bundles of fabric because of your angles that you've cut it on. You've got four strip sets. So what you'll find is you're going to use one of each of these in each of your diamonds and you're going to use one of each of those going the other way. So what I've done here is I haven't done full strip sets, I've done a few little strip sets and I'm hoping I have cut these long enough to be able to do. Now I do not under any circumstances recommend stacking these to cut. I don't recommend, in fact I'm only going to do two because in fact, I'm not going to do two because that way I'm worried people will do it at home. So all I'm doing now, you'll see I've only got half a strip set here to just show you one of these diamonds on how they would work. And I'm going to cut these. So this, remember we've got our two little piles previously, this now joins that pile over there. So you would obviously be folding these in half and putting the other half in the other pile of fabric over here. But we're only cutting the one way and that's why you're doing it here. Oh, and you see when you're cutting, make sure you're cutting against your ruler. And there we go. So there's another four. So I've got eight pieces there. Now because this is a demo and I'm going to run out of time, I am going to cut these two together. Do not do this at home because there is a very strong chance of it not being right. And you remember I said to you about consistent seams? This is what happens when you do your demo very quickly. You're standing up and you're not paying attention. So make sure you just be as consistent as you can be. Right. So now, this strip set I'm not using at the moment. I just used those to show you what we were doing. So now you're going to take all of these collections. Now remember, you're going to have two of each of these because you've got two of these, each of pieces of these fabrics as you go along. And now what you do is you build your diamond. So when I finish, show you the finished blue one, just going to put the blue one up here as a guide. The first thing you're going to do, the first, very, very first one that you pick is what colour is my central star going to be? So for this, I'm going to choose it to be red. So I'm going to choose red as my piece over here. So over here, you'll see that's my white piece over there. That's going to be my red piece as my starting star piece there. Okay. So I know I've got to have six in a row in order to build my... Each of the diamonds are six that way and six this way. So I'm then going to go through and I'm just going to build my diamond the way that I think it would work really well. Now this is 100% a personal choice. There is no right or wrong on this. You must choose what works best for you. And as you go through your fabrics, you may find something that doesn't work or after you've laid everything out, you're going to go and you're going to think, oh, oh, no, don't like that. 
because maybe you don't want to, you know, and having the same pieces together is sometimes a problem. So you can then just go through and you can just play with the fabrics as you go. One, two, three, four, five. So the most, the most difficult thing for me was actually picking which blocks pieces to go in in different places. Now, when you've done this, when you've got your strip sets, your, your bundles over here, try and only take two of each colorway. So over here, you'll see I've got three greens and I've got three browns. That's because I am using a smaller number together. But you can build these to be identical. And once you've laid them all out, take a photograph, check it's the way you want it to be. Um, because I find photographs do help in doing it. So maybe once I've done that, you think, actually, I don't like that. What I want to do is to then put a darker, a brighter color next to that. Then you do that. And you just find a way that's going to work. This bit here is quite important because this bit, if this is going to be your bottom part of your diamond, that is going to build your central star. And over here on the pattern, you'll see that I chose to have the greens, the yellows, the pinks, and the blues mostly matching around the star. You can do exactly the same. So when you're doing this, you can then lay that out and check. And I think that's quite a nice way of doing it. So that's going to be my color choice on this. Only thing I'm thinking as I'm looking at that again, and you will change your mind as you go through the process. I think those were a little bit too similar before. So I'm going to do that. There we go. I'm happy with that. You see, this is the problem. You change one thing and then it all changes again. You can be here for hours. There we go. Perfect. So I'm happy with that. Now, the process of stitching these together is exactly the same for doing two of them as it is for putting all of them together. And the bias here is incredibly important. And as anybody who's watched demos from me before knows, I absolutely hate using pins. You have got to use pins in this process, because if you don't, you're going to end up missing your points. And the whole, this is definitely one of those ones where you want to spend the time making sure you're going to hit your point. So I'm going to move these slightly out the way. And I'm going to put this over here for Joe to show you the most important section here. Over here, you've got the V of your stitch line over here. And what you're wanting is a quarter of an inch down from here, you're wanting the V from your stitch point on the other side to be exactly in that point. And it's very, very important to get that because otherwise you're not going to line up. Now, in my experience of making this, I would say 60% of my seams lined up. 60% of them didn't. And when we go back next and look at the quilt from a distance, uh, being your living room compared to the studio, you can't see the differences from there. And if you can, thank you for not pointing them out. It's very kind of you. But it's just important that if you don't hit a seam, it doesn't matter because when you look at that, sorry, you can't see that I haven't missed a seam, you, you, I've missed a point. I know when I get really up close and personal, that point is literally two threads away from the blue. You can't tell. So when you're sitting right up close and personal to it, you're going to be very upset. Don't be, because when you're looking at it from across the room, you're not going to see that point. And do not unpick. You're going to be on the bias. So if you're unpicking this, you're going to end up with stretching your fabric. So take your time and just go slowly, each and every seam, do it nice and slowly. I put my pins in here to make sure that I'm hitting as best I can my seams. And then when you start sewing it, you're going to have your point here being a quarter of an inch out. So I've now stitched, I've pinned those together as close as I can. Something's not right. Right. I'm going to try not using a pin. This is not going to end well, but there we go. We're going to give it a go.
I'm happy with that. So when you're pressing these, exactly the same thing. I get my best press out, I leave that. And I flip it round because I want as much best press on here as I can possibly get. Because what could possibly go wrong? I set my seam. And then when I'm rolling this over, I gently, gently, gently take the nose of my iron along there. And you can see, yes, very much. And you can see there. That is perfect. That is what you're looking for the whole way through your quilt. So try and make sure that you get that. But if you don't, please don't worry. Make sure that the next one's better than that one. That's the whole process that you're doing for the whole piecing it together. Once you've got two together, you're going to attach the third, whichever order it was that you, your photograph will show you. You'll do exactly the same. And you'll just build it up. And you're going to create it into chunks of three like that will be your that will be your first part diamond that will be your second part diamond so when you join those together you're going to do exactly the same process joining those there and then when you're doing the top one you'll have a really big long one to do there once these are all joined together and then all you're doing is exactly the same thing over here you're just joining these along the way making sure you try and catch your quarter inch seam all the way along so that is the process of doing that on how you get to that. Now, once you've done that, I've just realized I've cut the wrong fabric for this. So forgive me, I'm using a different fabric here than the white I should have used. I cut the wrong fabric and I'm not going to waste fabric cutting another piece. So forgive me on doing this. This is not the right size per the pattern. The pattern will tell you exactly how big it needs to be. Um, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Oh, right. Now, at this point, when I'm cutting at odd angles like that, I always rotate my mat just to make sure that you're safe. Um, and again, check the pattern for the size that you're cutting, because this is really important to get that right. Okay. Right, once you've cut your possibly the largest half square triangle you will ever cut, you're going to then take this corner to corner. Now remember, I'm doing this in the wrong color for the blue. I'm just not prepared to waste fabric by cutting another meter off that one there. So all I've done is I'm just using my ruler to create a cut line down there. And you'll see that I've now got my cut line on that because when I'm cutting a, a, a square this size, my ruler's not long enough to get to the end. Oh, there's my rotary cutter. Right, so rotate this back. So now I've got my four half square triangles. You will need two half square triangles per one of these quilts. Now, I just need to double check which side I'm, I'm printing, stitching that first. So there we go, make a decision. Are we doing purple in the middle or white? Perfect. So purple's gonna be in the middle. I'm now sewing this half square triangle, one of them, onto this edge first. This is all in the pattern, so don't worry about that. Now this one is, your quarter inch is, is important, but you're not meeting any seams. So it's a little less important if you get this wrong. So that's something just to be um, pleased about. You've got some fairly long seams that the seam allowance isn't that important on once you've actually put all your diamonds together. Brilliant. 
And there we go. So now I am pressing this back. Now here I do, I'm doing it roughly and quickly here. I try and press, I'll show you at the back when I've done it. I want my diamond to be as flat as possible. So I press my seam, hopefully like that, so that my diamond is flat and I check that my seam is like that. Now when I've done that, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim down my square. And then once I've trimmed down my square, I'm going to take my triangle and I'm going to fit that on there. Now, this is bias completely. This is bias completely. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up one side and I'm going to line up this side. This is bias everywhere. This is your best friend for bias. So I'm going to squirt that along there and having not done that on my mat like I was supposed to. Sorry about that. Get that nice and flat. You're then gonna press those down to dry it out. And again, this is where your quarter inch seam is not as important as it was when you were doing your diamonds. What is incredibly important is bias. So if you don't know much about bias, please do some research on it because it's a really, really interesting project. And it is so important that you don't end up with a wobbly quilt. Best Press will help you tremendously, but you just try very hard not to stretch your fabric because if it does, you will end up with a very bouncy um, quilt in the middle and you'll have loads and loads of fabric in the middle that your poor long armour or you have to get rid of. Right, there we go, almost done. And there we go, now we're at that point and now again I set my seam and just like before where I try to keep my diamond as flat as possible I'm going to roll this back I'm going to roll this back here and there we go so that's nice and flat and then Follow the pattern for how you then put this all together because it is a little bit of a Tetris game to get that right. So this is then the wrong colour for the background for the blue, but you can see then what you're creating as these wedges that you then build up in your quilt accordingly. How, how are we doing on the blue? Oh, blue is gone. How are we doing on the rest? Okay. So we've got two different colorways left available to you. We've got the autumn colorway. So remember each one of these, each one of these, we've got our Starry Night pattern. We've got our barley pop that's coming with it. And the yours will be folded a lot neater and without a chunk having been cut out of it. I'm gonna try and fold this a little better now actually. So 
So you're going to get three meters of the beige, you're going to get this wonderful barley pup, and the, this is the autumn collection that we've got here for the beige and the uh, autumn barley pup, and the wonderful set of instructions. That's the first colorway that I've just done the demonstration on. And then the quilt that is behind me that we've done, we've done this in the rainbow colorway. Um, and we've done this with three meters of the dark gray. Is it dark gray or school gray? I think it's dark gray. We did the dark gray and we've done this uh, barley pop for the quilt behind me. Both of those available with the set of instructions for $69.99. And it's a really big quilt. You can see this is a really lovely size quilt on it. This is the one that we've done now in the gray with the um, rainbow barley pop. You can see that that pops all the way through. Barley pops pop. <laughs> Oh, we've had an email in, yes. Me email in from Kathy. Morning, Kathy. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, that's gorgeous. Well done, Kathy. Oh, I love a Lone Star. They're really good. But I love the way she's done the extra fabric on the side as well. That's great use of fabric there. What a clever idea. I hadn't thought of that. How wonderful, and the borders just make it that extra bit bigger as well. Brilliant, well done. But what I love about these is especially people who want to do free motion quilting or are enjoying the quilting aspect, you've got so much negative space here. Sorry, my ironing board's falling on my leg. So we've got all this negative space here. So when you're doing your quilting, you could perhaps start a beautiful set of feathers feeding in, and then you could have a big paisleys coming out. You could have a whole load of feathers coming in there as well, because I like, because I do long arm quilting as well, I wanted there to be a lot of negative space for people to be able to play around in the background, or just leave it open and just quilt it with straight lines going side to side. There are so many different options available for this, which I love, I think that's great. So there we go. We've got the two different colorways left. We've got the brights, uh, the rainbow, and we've got the autumn. Hopefully you now know roughly how you are going to make that when you get the pattern. The sizes and everything are included in there. Thank you all so much. We're going to redo the set now and we'll be back in a few minutes. Hi there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love for you to join me for my birthday celebrations on Monday the 6th of July. We're going to be live for five hours, all the way from 8 o'clock in the morning through to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. We're going to have special deals for you, um, they've got lots of special offers, I'm going to be signing photographs for everybody that places an order and there's going to be demonstrations from both myself and from Delphine Brooks as well. So hopefully you can join me on Monday the 6th at 8 o'clock in the morning. I'll see you then. To see me back. <laughs> <laughs> My baby piece of kiss with the sewing is the same with that. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in the school. My claim to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for the ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show! Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. 
Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories, and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. Hello there, I'm Debbie Shaw and I would love you to join me on the first Monday of every single month for Sewing Street Surgery. Now this is a dedicated hour where I answer your questions and that could be questions about techniques, it could be questions about tools, it could be questions about new products or maybe something that you've seen that you just don't understand. There's a lot of questions about tensions on sewing machines and there's a lot of questions about working with different weights of fabrics. So if you have a question that you'd like to ask me, the easiest way to bring a question over to us is to go to our Facebook page and post your question on there. I will collate all of those questions throughout the week. If we need any new products for you or if we need any new demonstrations, those will all be worked on leading up to that first Monday of the month. So do join me, Debbie Shaw, on Sewing Street Surgery on the first Monday. Hello, I'm Catherine Wright. I'm from Leicestershire Craft Centre, which is based in Market Harborough. I love all kinds of sewing, but probably my favourite thing to do is dressmaking. Um, but I also teach patchwork and free motion embroidery and anything to do with textiles, really. I love to have a go at felting and crochet and knitting and, oh, you name it, I'll have a go at it. Uh, so I started sewing when I was seven. My mum taught me to sew and the very first thing I made was an apron. But I'm a terribly impatient person. I also just want to get on with the project. So I uh, didn't wait for her to help me cut it out and I cut it out myself and I didn't know you had to have a seam allowance. So I made the world's smallest apron and my mum still has it somewhere. Um, so uh, sewing tips, I would say, I teach a lot of people to sew, especially beginners, and I would say, don't get disheartened. Take your um, learning journey slowly. Don't expect to suddenly make a ball gown or suddenly make a king size quilt. Build up your skills, um, you know, slowly. Um, and I would also say the iron is your friend. Use your iron a lot. It makes your sewing look so much better. It helps you get things in place where you want it before you sew and is a really handy thing to have. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Welcome back. This is our 10 o'clock hour. We've got the fabulous Alison back with us. Did you have a good break? I did, thank you. Nice cup of coffee. Good, <laughs> good. So today I'm looking at all these fabulous aprons. You're going to be making something beautiful for us now. What have you got? Well, the crossback apron, I started off... I do made you want to my do a twirl so we can see the I back? I did my niece's children some for Christmas and I thought I quite fancy one of those for myself. Well, I won't <laughs> deny I'm actually tempted. Just turn around again for us and stop there. Oh, I love that because what's great with that is you can get into it without damaging your hair or your... It just fits everything and it, perfectly. It's like a tunic, really. Yes. You know, it's, it's, um, you can wear it throughout the day and not just when you're doing your cooking and things like that. And I've also, because I love appliqué so much... I couldn't have I've told. <laughs> oh my gosh, take, look at your egg! I'll take this one off because I've got a couple of appliqué pocket designs. I'll put those in there. That is incredible. So we've got the baking design. I'll move those out of the way. The baking design. You are design. an absolute professional, my dear. And in, <laughs> in two ways, we've got fuser web. So that's what we're getting in this crossback apron here with the pattern. Yeah. So you've got the eggs, you've got everything included in it. That's actually um, printed on the pattern. Oh, so it's already printed? So that, oh, gosh, So you better. trace that off the pattern. Can I open this one? Yes, yeah. 
But the other ones, the crayon ones, uh -huh. well, that was on the children's ones, and the artist one, they're individual Probably ones that... <laughs> they're right, ones so let's that see what we're getting. Me. You're getting this wonderful bag that it's coming in. Lovely little button. Hang on to the yeah, button, because so you're very good with I, these. <laughs> I like a little embellishment. <laughs> so you've got this great set of instructions here. With your layout Perfect. plan. Perfect. There we go. It's just sitting in a different place. The camera's yeah. in a different spot now. So you've got all the wonderful templates and showing you how to put these all together. You've got the pattern on how to make it there. Oh my goodness, look at this! This it's is enormous! Sheet. It's a big sheet. Right, okay. And I'm not allowed to get you to hold one half oh, and I'll hold the no. other half. So forgive me while I do this. <laughs> I'm going to hold this as... It's enormous! So you've got the whole And the great thing you've got all the different sizes, yeah, don't and you? and the children's. And the baking applique is on there as well to be traced off. Goodness me, you've thought of absolutely everything here. And what I love about these is they're a really thick, gorgeous line. So when you're marking these they're out, nice and they're nice and trace. clear to see. Yeah. And you've done the sizes here, so they go down to kids' sizes, going up to, is it a 22? 20, 20 yeah. To a 20. Yeah, UK 20, and going down to a 20-inch chest for a child, That's which brilliant. is this one here, nice, that one there. That's the smallest it goes down to. This is excellent, and then you can do your iron-on transfers or use your bonder with yeah. and your fabric all on these to get it done. Yeah. These will work really well with a light box as well, won't they? They will, yes, yeah. Fabulous. I use the light box especially for the... Um, the needle turn applique that I use freezer paper with. Right. Because freezer paper is a bit thicker yes. than um, the fuser web. The right. fuser web you can see through quite easily, but the freezer paper is a little bit thicker, so it's good using a light box for that. That's fab. So you're getting this wonderful pattern, you can see it is so, so user friendly, absolutely filled with everything you're going to need for it, and that's $14.99. That is fabulous. So you, we're doing the one, the baking one now. Yeah. So you've cut all these out already. So you're yeah. Three well, steps I've, ahead, I've aren't got you? Um, because the the other two designs, the the artist palette and the crayons, the pencils, they they've been done on separate sheets for show, for Sewing Street. Right. So they're oh. not actually with the pattern that I sell. Yeah. Yeah. Exclusive to us. I like that. So basically, the you can see by the huge Sorry, piece of paper. Again? Laura? It's all cut in say? one piece. Oh, sorry, I thought you said. It's all cut in one piece, adult as well. So you cut your piece on well, the before fold. Before we do that, let's see which fabric you're using. So oh, you're yes, using I've got the, the red, red canvas, canvas aren't yep. you? So this is the wonderful red canvas that you can use, and you can see it is such a beautiful, beautiful colour. Really lovely to use. This is available now for three ninety nine by the half metre. So how many metres would you need for this? I got these two children's out of a metre. A metre? Of that, because it's a wide it's a big, fabric. It's a very wide fabric, yeah. this. If you've got, um, say, a 40... I'm not sure if my arms are quite long <laughs> enough, but you can see that's what you're getting with these. Do, uh, is this 55 inches? Yeah, because you know? I didn't fold it in the centre, I yes, felt, you did it, felt the it the other way, yeah. You did it lengthways. And it is explained so in the pattern. So you got that from, you got a metre and yeah. you did two child's I got, ones. I got the smallest and the um, next couple of sizes up out okay. of the one. So if you wanted to make two adult sizes, what would you need, a metre and a meter. half? No, a metre, it takes a metre for an adult one. A metre for an adult yeah. one, brilliant. Uh, but you've got left over that you could potentially do a small child's one out of it um, as well? No, because you've got you've, that course. piece of paper. It's a huge piece of fabric. It's doubled. Of course. Because you can see You've how wide this back. is just for the children's size. Yes. So, you know, it goes all the way from the back, all the way around in one piece. Brilliant. So you wouldn't get a child's one out of it, but I mean, you can but get the two. I think it's important just people know roughly how much fabric yeah. they need. Yeah. So that you'd need a metre for, a, for adult. an adult. Yeah. And if you're doing two children's, you'd get it out of a metre. Yeah. And that's because you're cutting it lengthways yeah. rather than widthways. Yeah. Brilliant. So that's the red. We've also got our ecru, which is uh, white in other languages, I would have thought. A little bit off-white. It's beautiful as well. Also £3.99 for a metre, a uh, half metre of that. Sorry, half metre of that. And then we've got our two denim fabrics here. I absolutely love this dark denim. I absolutely love these. So this is 8 ounce denim, heavy medium weight, wash denim, uh, dark blue by a half metre for 4 .99. Let me show you how big that one is as well. These are huge fabrics. 
So again, you'd need a metre of this if you were making an adult's one. And if you did get a metre, you'd probably get two children's ones out yeah, as well. Because you, you see, for me, when I do sewing my studio, I want one of those with a little pocket in the front so I can yeah. hide things in and lose. Yeah, this one I haven't put pockets, but I do normally. I've got yes. a couple down here that I'll show but you. But I think the denim works very, very well for it that is, because yeah. the threads don't stick yeah. to it. Because I found the other day, if I use a jumper or if I've got a jumper on, the threads just hide in it completely. Yeah. So I was, um, I'm very keen to be doing one of these. But then if you don't like the darker one, we've got a slightly different colour denim here. Also eight ounce weight, medium to heavy. Really lovely to feel. This is called medium blue. Again, $4.99 for the half metre of that one as well. But if you wanted to do something perhaps a little bit more fun, we've got our, especially for children's ones, we've got these wonderful Cotland Poplin stars. Do you want the red one first? Blue first, sorry. So we've got these wonderful pale blue stars. Uh, these are $3.99 again by the half metre. Let me show you how big these are. The red and the blue will be exactly the same size. Look at that nice good size, 44 inches there by half metre. And this is $3.99 by the half metre here. And we've got the red colourway as well. I'm not very good at this folding thing. <laughs> And there's our red colourway too. I'm not quite sure which one of these I prefer. They're really fun. Well, as it's Independence Day, you should do the really red. And, oh, and it's Independence Day, of yes. course it is. And Debbie's birthday. Happy birthday, Debbie. Happy birthday, Debbie! Because <laughs> you'll be tomorrow. watching on your birthday. It's tomorrow. It's Debbie's <laughs> oh, is tomorrow. It? I thought she said it was a Saturday the fourth. or Sunday. Either way, happy yeah. birthday, Debbie. <laughs> should we do the dinos? Yeah, lovely. And then we've got these that. really sweet dinos, dinosaurs. Because... Uh, for children, I mean, they're ideal to put on when they're playing. It doesn't exactly. have to be an apron. It can be a tunic, exactly. messy play and things like that. And yeah. the good thing with these is you need to just put them in the wash and yeah. get them done. Yeah. So this is four ninety nine for a half metre of the um, dinosaur rocks layer on grey. And then very last, but certainly not least, we've got this that. lovely... I love it. It's a <laughs> denim as well. It looks like it, yeah. I didn't oh, want to touch it like to feel it, but it's nope, a good way. No. Oh my gosh, this is very, very limited, I'm hearing. And look, oh, it's, it's enormously beautiful. wide. Yeah. I have to say, this is Ditsy, De uh, Ditsy Daisies on denim fabric, 4 99 by the half metre. And I have to say, for the one I want to make, beautiful. this would be really good. I can't yeah. even stretch far enough to show you it all. Huge amount of fabric there. This one is quite limited, so if you are interested in the Ditsy on denim, please make sure you check out. I don't want you to be losing out on that. Gosh, on the patterns. Over half the stock on your patterns oh my is goodness. gone already. <laughs> I haven't even started the demo. So these are some fabulous fabrics that you'll be able to do this wonderful um, apron and tunic in. So over to you, my darling. <laughs> Let's see what you've got. Well, I, I said this is all cut in one piece and it's the same for the adults. And really, the apron is made by the fabric. Right. And I'm... Oh, am I... I'm... A sucker for a blossom really that I think that's why I like that little daisy ditzy there as well um, and I bought this to make a tunic and my daughter said oh mum it looks like fried eggs <laughs> I won't deny I thought fried <laughs> eggs too so I thought fried eggs <laughs> and I think you're standing right next to the baking one <laughs> yeah, behind yeah. you as well yeah so I thought what well, better fried eggs for a penny <laughs> nothing wrong with that um, so yeah that's how that ended up here but as I said, I love applique because you can personalise stuff so much. So I'll go into the couple of um, various ways of doing the applique. Brilliant. But first of all, I'll go through the apron because it really is so simple. Just cut out of the one piece and then you use your bias binding all the way around the outside edge. So when you're doing the shoulder seams, because it's... I'll take that off. It's only the shoulder seams... So the first thing sew. you're going to do is you're going to cut, you're going to mark it out on your, you've got your pattern. Yep. You mark your fabric out with the pattern. Yep. And then cut out. Cut it all out. Yep. And then what you're going to do is a French seam if you haven't got an overlocker. If you've got an overlocker, that's fine. You can do it with that. But if not, you're going to do a French seam. So to do a French seam, you've got to remember to cross over to the opposite 
to the opposite shoulder I, I seam. I feel like I need to ask you how you know that. <laughs> <laughs> it, we've all learned by our mistakes, haven't we? <laughs> and then that one's going to go over. So we're going to do a French seam. The seam allowance is a centimetre. Do we know what that is in Imperial? Uh, Three-eighths of an inch? Well, half an inch is 1.25. Roughly, 1.3. Well, to be honest, I would... We're going to call it three of an inch. Yeah, I would go probably um, quarter of an inch and quarter of an inch if you've yeah. got your quarter inch foot on. But not seeing this with a pattern on, <laughs> it's difficult to actually show you, but you've got... This is your outside, this is your right side. Because with a French seam, you're going to sew your seam on the outside, yep. so you've got the right side, you're... So that when you so, start a French seam, you put wrong sides together. That's right, yeah. And then you go right sides together, yeah. then you go wrong sides together, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I've done one French seam in my entire life. Uh -huh. And look oh, at the, me pretending uh... to know what I'm talking about. So we're going to take a small seam in there. And I'll do a lock stitch. If you haven't got a lock stitch on your machine, if you reinforce it at the edges. Uh, so there is on. a thread cutter there if you wanted it. There Little it is. Scissors. Will it do it while well, that's up? No. It won't, will it? That's got to be down. That's it. And then the other one. Take the pin out. The um, needle's over to the, the side. So the way I've set it up now is if you've got your fabric to the edge of the foot, it's a quarter exactly of an inch. Quarter inch. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so that's the outsides. The iron might still be on. Do you need it? Yes, I will. Okay. I'll use it in a minute. Just checking. Remember I told you that I'm always leaving the iron on yeah. and everything gets very hot. So we're going to turn it the other way round now. And we're going to sew these again, enclosing the seam that you've just done. at home. <laughs> there we go. I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> so you're just stitching now, it's a little bit more than a quarter of an inch. That's isn't right, it? so that you're actually enclosing the that one seam. that you've just done. And these are now the right sides of the fabric folded together. Together, yeah. And you're sewing from the wrong side of yeah. the fabric. Mm. You're joking. Alison, your pattern has officially sold out. Oh, my goodness. Are we able to get more? <laughs> yes. We are. Okay. Uh, not right away. Not but <laughs> <laughs> I expect 100 by the time you finish this dinner. By the time I go home. <laughs> so at the moment, we haven't got any stock left of the pattern. Mm -hmm. So if you could um, check back, keep checking back on our website, and the moment we've got that available, it'll pop I back up on our that, website yeah. available. But unfortunately, the pattern has sold out. Oh wow! So, do so, you only do the? Do you do any other patterns at the moment of your own? Not at the moment. I've got <laughs> trouble. Is it's difficult getting it from here to there? <laughs> I know it well. <laughs> uh, you know, creative people have got loads and loads of ideas, but it's actually getting it down on paper. <laughs> so the seam now you've done right and wrong. So you've got a nice little yeah s sort of safe so now. Stage. I'll put that there. Now I'm going to take this towards the back. There's your enclosed seam. And I'm going to take that towards the back and I'm just going to sew along to hold that in place. So it's one side of the seam. You're yeah. not enclosing it again. You're just no, sewing it onto one that's side. It. So make sure that's the right way around. So that's going to go that way. And then this one towards the back. Just put them in to hold them in place. And the back, you know, because that's where the scalloped edges are. That's right, Perfect. that's where you've got your, your So are fold. you top stitching now? I am, so yes. So if you wanted to use a decorative stitch or anything now, could you do that? You could, yes, yeah. What you're doing really is you're holding down the folded fabrics to make it easier for when you put on the bias binding, basically. 
because I'm a glutton for punishment and I like narrow bias binding. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> so tell me a bit more about the patterns you'd like to do. Well, I'd love to do a tunic and I've... I've it's the pattern grading that's a, an issue, you know, when you're new to that sort of thing. But I've got um, a tunic that I made with a different pocket. It, mm -hmm. it isn't a pocket inseam or anything like that. And it's really nice. And I thought, it's really lovely. I ought to do something with that. Oh, I 100% agree with that. <laughs> so you've been sewing all your life, you say. What's your favourite thing to sew? Whatever's on the machine at the time, really. <laughs> <laughs> so you, do you do a lot I of do dress quilt. making clothing? Yeah, I do quilt. Mm -hmm. um, and I, yeah, dressmaking. I do dressmaking as well. I mean, I loved Jane's stuff yesterday. Oh I, I cross stitch when I. Yeah, wonderful. See, I don't even cross stitch. Even I was looking and going, I want that glass. I that, wanted that yeah. greenhouse. Oh, that greenhouse is And it's sold out. <laughs> it is. So there we are, that's the apron, that's it, put together, finished. So let's just talk a little bit about bias binding. So just to recap very quickly, so if you wanted to make an adult apron, considering perhaps I'm a little rounder than some, <laughs> how large, how big a piece of fabric would you need? You only need a metre. Only a metre. Because it's not it actually gates. fitted, is no, it? No. Yeah, so it, it's quite forgiving. It is. Can we say that? Quite That's forgiving. That's very kind. <laughs> you had the most wonderful way because you very kindly made that beautiful shirt for me. Yes. Uh, which I keep getting, and I'm wearing it. I love it. I think it's the most beautiful shirt. So you've got a lovely way with words or things like that. So only a metre of fabric. So if you yeah. were using that red canvas, you'd be getting two pieces, two units, and that three ninety nine a metre uh, for a half metre. So you'd be paying seven ninety eight for the fabric for that. Yes. And then we'll hopefully we'll be able to get the pattern in quite soon yes. to be able to get that um, done. The only thing that's different with the adult one is if you want to do it in one metre of fabric, it can't have a pattern run. Good point. Because um, it says in there, in the instructions, when you fold it, your... Um, what am I trying to say? On the narrower ones, there isn't enough when you fold. Say yes. you wanted to use a 45 width, a, a quilting cotton. Uh, when you fold that, there wouldn't be enough width in the folded fabric to take it. So you to have to it. fold it um, the other direction. So you, you wouldn't want your pattern, pattern going. Run. So if you did want a pattern middle. run, that would be two metres of fabric then, or a metre and a half. Um, well, no, it, it would be... Um, a metre and a half, metre yes. Metre and a half. Yeah, metre and a half. Because you could get it in with a metre and a half. Yeah. Just wanted to check, because some yeah. people do ask that question, and it's it's one of those things, while well, we've got you yeah. here, let's ask. Yeah. So you've now made this wonderful bias tape. Well, yes, because not only did I get two children's aprons out of a metre of fabric, I also got all of the bias binding out of a fat quarter. <laughs> this That's is a fat quarter? And, and all this. I've done samples of different... Um, samples of different pockets and all this was all out of a fat quarter so I can get the binding for this one the binding for that one and all the samples of oh the pockets that I'll show you in a minute. So for an adult's quilt not pattern matching you'd need a meter of this and then a fat quarter of contrast fabric as your binding. Well you actually need for an adult's one you need seven meters of Bias binding. binding tape. Yeah and out of the fat quarter on this half inch width of bias, I got nine metres. Perfect, so you'd have more than enough yeah. left over of that. Yeah. Because I've got loads of fat quarters that I just love the fabric, yeah. but I've never had anything to do it with. But when I look at that and I think, gosh, that's a really good idea. Because I love this denim, I think this denim's really good, and especially for sewing, because yeah. I do a lot of it, and I th I've got threads everywhere. Doing something with this denim and then some really, really fabulous fat quarter as, yeah, a, as, a, as a binding, as a binding on yeah, it. Yeah, because be it's really lovely great. having the plain fabric, and then I. I'm going to get myself some Liberty and do some Liberty Ooh. at some point. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know that we sell it too now, I do, don't yes, you? Yes, yes, I saw the, the show. The quality's incredible. It's beautiful, it's really isn't it? Good. Yeah. Well, this is a Rosen Hubble um, poplin. Perfect. Um, I know that's on the uh, website. But I made the half inch bias tape. And then to make life easier, I always, I'll just check which side, which end I've got to go. I've got to go that end, because there is a difference. You know what you're doing? Right, before I start doing any sewing with the bias binding, I fold it in half. So it's folded in half, 
but because the bias binding is going all the way around the outside edge and you want to do it in one sweep, I fold it and then I press it so that, I don't know whether you can see that, but there's about a millimetre, oh there we go, if I go over there, so look, there you go. <laughs> there's you about a, a millimetre here that is further over than the top. So that means that as you're putting it on, because all you're going to do is you're going to sandwich your apron in between the bias binding. Yes. And there's nothing worse than getting, I said earlier, didn't I, than getting round here and finding that you haven't caught the back. Because it doesn't look the same if you go no. over and you've got two li lines of stitching. No. I'm really setting myself a challenge here, aren't I? <laughs> it's all right, we've got half an hour. Finish it off. Come on, darling. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you press it down and leave that millimetre, when you're actually sewing round it, you should, in theory, always catch the underside of the bias. No pressure then. No. <laughs> so when you ca now, I've never used bias binding. I can put the binding on my quilts and then I don't know what to do with it because it goes to Sylvia. But when you're doing this, where would you start? Because well, for me, I wouldn't start on a corner. But that's probably yeah, you where haven't you got have. any. No, you haven't got any corners here. It's all curves, so you haven't got to worry about a corner. I will before I start. Just check here. If you can see, can we just have a look Oops. at that here? We've got some little edges here, little bits that need snipping off, so that that's so that that's straight. But these are good tips. Yeah, because if you try and here as well, if you try try and put bias binding around that edge there. You've got this little bit here. So we'll just cut that off. The adult size doesn't have such an acute angle because obviously it goes over a bigger shoulder. So um, <laughs> the children's one, you have to make sure that that's straight. So when you're putting on your bias, you start, I always start on the underside. So this is our top, we've got our top stitching at the shoulders and all we're going to do now, let's start. You know your um, binding yesterday? Yes. It's just like that really. You're doing exactly the same thing. I want to say I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> let's take it the right way round. So we've got our bias binding and I'm leaving a little edge. You can start straight away and start sewing on the raw edge if you don't mind a finish where your bias binding meets and you've got one piece going over another and it looks like that. Right. I don't know who, yes, where it's, it's folded over. Yeah. But if you want to join it like you did with yours yesterday, okay. you leave on the diagonal. Yeah, well I don't do it on the diagonal because it's so tiny. I do a straight one, but you do, you leave a little bit and start again. So how much of an edge would you leave? About a couple of inches. Perfect. Yeah, just so that you've got... Uh, I've got that one to the stage where I've joined it and mm -hmm. you can see where it all joins up together. So I don't pin it, but I will, to start off, my first stitches are pinned. Okay. And this is another one where you make sure your bobbin is full. <laughs> yes. And then you're going to go round and that's all you're going to do. You're in, going to enclose and because you're, you're cut on the bias here, it goes round nicely. So I'll start sewing. What's but I say? could do with this being in the centre, the needle. So, ah, that one. No, 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 no. No? no? Oh, yes, it has. Yeah. Oh. That's it. Uh, have you not changed? Do me a favour. Just on the side of the machine, turn it on and off. Yeah. That's it. Um, I think you sent some pictures of your family wearing the I aprons. Did, can, yes. we send, can we show them? Yes. Oh, brilliant, yes. yes. <laughs> oh. oh, my goodness. And <laughs> so what are their names? That's Rihanna and Paisley. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, that's, that's wonderful. My niece, Rihanna, and, and that's Sawyer. Oh, that's wonderful. He's got, um, I'll show you in a minute, different pockets. And he's got the big adult size pocket. Yes. Because um, that's in the um, pattern. And the big pocket, I think, for children is lovely. And he likes running around with his cars with and things yeah, in them. So, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's adorable. So how much cooking do you get to do with them? 
I don't because they're in Cornwall. Oh, of course. Yeah, my beloved Cornwall. <laughs> There we go. So you start with your needle down. Do you do a locking stitch at this point as well? Yeah, so you do a not locking stitch. Right, I've got it set in there. So we're going to start off. Also, to help you keep on track, don't go too fast. <laughs> and I'll zap that up to the fast as it goes. You might want to slow it down. I might want to slow it Because <laughs> <laughs> I was doing strip seats. <laughs> and also... Don't try and go too far ahead, you know, you can do this, but if you only do a few inches at a time, you're, you're in control, you know what's happening. And as you go round, just, you don't pull the Well, everything's on the bias, bias. so you just let the machine do it. That's right, you? yeah. I mean, you now, can... Now, at what point are you checking that you've actually caught everything on the other side? I'm not, I trust you implicitly I, I on trust it. I trust my... But for someone like me who's never done this before... <laughs> you can keep checking. Perfect. What, every sort of <laughs> but three, you shouldn't four need inches? to. If you've pressed it, yeah, if you've yes, pressed so that it, extra you really shouldn't... I think that's a really good tip, yeah, though, you that shouldn't, extra millimetre. You shouldn't really have a problem. So, I mean, I can do this in 10 minutes at home. <laughs> Goodness me. Well, there you <laughs> go. You've got 21. <laughs> yeah, but I want to <laughs> no show you the pockets. <laughs> So you keep going around. If you just around. maybe go to, so to the middle of that bottom bit, yeah. then that will give you an idea of where we're doing and how we're doing it. And because it's all in one piece and you haven't got separate armholes, you just keep going around and you end up at the same place. So you don't have to take off the bias binding. Hang on, you're going to have to trace that out for me because my brain doesn't you're get You're going to go all the way around. Yes. And you're going to go up here. Yes. Over that shoulder. Yes. Down through the neck. Oh my goodness! Then that you're was going to go down confused. there, and then you're, and then you're going to the come back side. there, <gasps> oh, and back Alison, there, you and are down clever. here. So you don't even have to join your bias, other than at the end. That is really clever because I did wonder whether you'd have to do under the arms as a no, separate piece. No, no, it's all in one piece. You just keep going for seven odd meters if you're an adult. Yes. 12 metres for me. This is three and a half, this one. No! <laughs> <laughs> that took a while to twig, but no, seven metres. <laughs> that is brilliant. So if I take that off now. Now, if you had stopped that, when, if you started back up again, would you start two or three stitches before you yes, ended? Or yeah. would you do a locking stitch at yeah, that point? Yeah, you can lock stitch, you can reverse or, Fine. yeah. But, um, you shouldn't really need to stop because, I mean, oh look, it's all caught on the back. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> yeah, I have no so doubt by, it would be. <laughs> so by pressing that, you're <coughs> taking that trouble out. The only thing I would say that the only place you want to stretch your bias slightly, not a lot, you really don't want to do it a lot, just put a little bit of tension, is around the neck. You just put, as you're going around this bottom bit here, if you just pull the slightest little bit of tension, not a lot, you don't want to stretch it so no. that it's really tight, because um, you can, if you, if you have it too loose, the, the, it can fall forward. Ah, she says looking. <laughs> that's a good tip. Yeah, so just a tiny little bit of tension around the neck. And then when you reach the other end, This is all on the underside, so I've gone all the way around and I've joined up the middle and then I've done your join that you did yesterday. You actually leave your little piece here when you start and then when you get to the end, you find out where your two pieces are going to join. Now, would you make that ever so slightly shorter than the fabric? No. no. Exact. Okay. So, yeah. So you're going to... Do a seam across your bias binding, press it open, and then fold it back into the bias shape, and then just carry on. Let's move that one out of the way. You can have a finished one now, aren't you? Yeah. See how quick that was. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I re really want to have a little go with the um, applique. Well, that's your passion, isn't it? It is. I love it, yeah. A little bit of embellishment. You, and... you just bring them to life with this gorgeous applique on it. 
So how do you come up with your ideas for the different appliques that you get on here? I don't know, but my next one, I'd love to do a hamburger. Oh, Wouldn't it be fantastic? Be You've got your bun down here and your to burger. Say, and... I definitely yeah. have that one. <laughs> <laughs> or a donut. <laughs> it's all food related, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> oh, I'm shaking a bit, so it's going a bit. You're doing great. Bit of rye. Well, I'm loving this. I'm definitely very keen on doing this. I do think I'm going to do it in this denim. I, every time I look at this denim, I keep thinking I it definitely want It is lovely, want that. yes. And I of course, if you want, you can, have a a, <laughs> you can have a pocket as long as you like. I mean, exactly. you don't have to use the pattern. And also, my problem is I'd feel like a kangaroo. I'd have yes, a pocket like yeah. this with all my fat yeah. cords and everything yeah. in it. Um, on the pattern, there is actually a sticker pointing towards the pocket placement because that is purely as a suggestion. A suggestion, yeah. I mean, because it depends what you're doing. If I had a pocket here now, of course, it would be in the way. Exactly. So you can put it a bit lower. And I suppose as well, it depends whether you're on air or on air, making it sound as though that's what everybody does. But standing sewing or sitting sewing. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Pocket placement, guide only. Yeah. Oh, that's for kiddies. Adults play the pocket placement there. That's really good. And the great thing, you've been really thoughtful with that as well, being able to get the kiddies pocket placement over here. But then obviously the adult one being bigger, you're popping the yeah. adult pocket, pa pocket placement over there. Hmm? I would do it slightly faster than this. <laughs> now one of the products we go. we've got on today is this Odie coat, which makes your fabric oil cloth. Is that something you'd Brilliant recommend for stuff. these? Yeah. Is it? If you're having children that want to do like messy play, mm. On denim, it would be wonderful. So there we are, there's the finished Well, I've apron. never used it because I've never, I don't really do any form of um, cloth making. Brilliant for bags as well. Is, well, that's what I'm just thinking. This is a really good idea. And you just literally brush this onto the fabric yeah. and you do various yeah. layers to make it yeah, like waterproof. You don't, um, there was cloth. one that you used to have to dry with a hairdryer. <clears throat> I don't think you do with that. It's air drying, isn't it? doesn't say. Yeah, I think that's air drying, that one. Allow to so dry for 20 front. minutes before spreading one or two other coats for a perfect seal. Yeah. And there's the back. Completely dry after 24 hours. Um, to be able to wash your fabric in a machine at 30 degrees. Oh, you can still wash it. It's not just spongeable then. No. All oh, right. Yeah, so if you were doing like... So if you're putting only one coat on, that gives you a bit more of a matte finish, doesn't I it? I would have thought so, yes. And I haven't it, actually it just used saying it. Here to be, um, uh, for a perfect seal and um, spreading one or two other coats over the initial coat to give you a perfect seal and a satiny feel. Yeah, because I used <coughs> years ago, because when I was in Cornwall, that's when I did my teaching qualification and I did general crafts then, uh, silk painting and things like that. And we did um, some decoupage and there's deco patch, I think it's called, something like that, that I used. And it went quite shiny. Oh, right. I did it, actually, I did it for a pair of shoes, a pair of pumps oh, to match right. a dress I did. And I covered the shoes and I did, and it went quite shiny. So that would be quite nice. It would, yes. Yeah. The shoes were almost painted by the time I'd uh, finished. <laughs> so these we've got today, it's 14.99 by 250 millilitres. But this is, I'm imagining you're going to get quite a lot in here because it doesn't sound like you need to use a huge amount of no, this No, you spread it, it, don't you, with a brush, I yeah. think, yes. I kind of want to take it home and try it. There you go. <laughs> but this is perfect, especially for kids' ones, because mm, most brilliant. of the kids are either baking or doing colouring yeah. or, or um, painting or in the garden. Yeah. It's great. And then you can, the fact that you can do the 30 degree wash on it as well. Yeah. I think that's a fabulous thing. So, yeah, that's, that's that finished. That's your apron finished. That is and so you can, good. With, your, with the um, bias binding on different pockets, all this came out of the fat quarter, all these little bits and pieces. So All the binding you mean? Yeah. All still out of that one yeah. fat quarter. Brilliant. And that's that's the actual pattern pocket. So that's the pocket that comes with the pattern. And I've taken it around with the bias binding. Now are you doing 
one strip for the bias binding for the curve yep. and, and then, then one the, across one the top. One bit across the top. Fine, so you wouldn't turn that round to get the corner? No, because you couldn't do that at the other side. Well, no. well, actually, um, there was a lady on the um, fans page yesterday that asked about it and I said if there was time I would show her how to do a mitre. Oh, let's <laughs> um, <laughs> see how we go. The, well, it was, it's similar to what you did with your binding yes, holding yesterday. Back and forth, yeah, yes. it's just that I don't go off the corner, I just stop and then turn and go round. Ah, okay. So I don't actually sew off the corner. But with this one, yes, you go around the outside edge first and then you do the top and then what, before you put it on, you just fold those, back. fold those in and then sew around the bottom there. But there's nothing to say that you have to have that. You could have oh, a my little goodness, square you don't pocket. Have to have it folded. And have this could binding. be at the front. Or if you turned it the other way round, obviously this would be the other way round, you could just have a plain pocket and have it uh, nice and tidy on the back. That's what I like about bias binding. It, 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 you don't have the bulk of a double turned um, seam or hem, so it, it lays nice and flat. So you could put a couple of those on. Mm. I'll just go through a few bits and pieces I've got here. So if you folded the raw edge of that towards the front with the bias, this one? Yes, on the very top where your hand... This is what no, it no, is. No, on the square one. This one. At the very top. How have you gotten rid of your raw edge? Have you folded that under the bias at the front? Yeah. So basically what, what I've done is I've put oh my the goodness, bias I see on there. exactly what you've done. Yes. What a clever and idea. And then I did this one to show you what a lovely curve you can get. If you don't want that, mm. you could do your pocket like this and you sew your bias binding the, the distance away from the edge of your fabric in the first fold. So then you push it over and obviously press it. Yes. And then sew down. So you've got, if this was in a matching mm -hmm. thread, you wouldn't even see that. That's brilliant. So that's how you can get a nice curve. Please, and you I, can I do quite this like the idea you've got the, the, the top stitch to it if it's not yeah, in the same thing. Yeah, and you can do that all around the apron. The only thing you do have to bear in mind if you're going to do the whole of your apron like that, all mm -hmm. the way around the back, around here, you're going to lose, because this bias binding is actually placed on the outside edge of the fabric, you're not losing any of the size. But if